Hail DM. and well met. I am Mr. Eager DM at your service, and we welcome you one and all to Trapped at Home, a live stream Dungeons and Dragons experience brought to you by Lawful Stupid RPG. Thank you for being here. We do appreciate it. For the past year, this group has been playing through the 5th edition module, Descent into Avernus. But tonight, we continue our hiatus from the Plains of Hell, or actually, not from the Plains of Hell, from that particular module, and look in on a different set of adventurers from an earlier time, as we wait for two of our members to be finished with their maternity and paternity leave. Uh, I am happy to say that we will be returning to Descent into Avernus. Um, this is the penultimate game of Descendants into Avernus. So after this, we will have one more, and then we are back on track with the module. But the field of players for this particular adventure dwindles as one by one, they each fall in various ways to the forces of darkness. Tonight... Joining us, we have Boletus the Druid, Artem the Artificer, Jexter the Bard, and Zelmira the Monk. And making a special guest appearance, we have Smiler the Defiler. My friends, it is time. I extend my hand, inviting you to step with me into fantasy. Release your hold on that which you know to be true and let imagination rule for the next few hours. Last time. The adventurers continued their exploration of the floating citadel in the Astral Sea. After discovering signs of devil worship, specifically that of Zariel, Lord of Avernus. They ventured down into a subterranean prison entitled the Oubliette. There, they found remnants of long dead corpse and a pool of sinister red water, which they determined to be taken from the River Styx, a prominent feature of the Plains of Hell and of the Abyss, famous for stealing away the mind of anyone who touches it, let alone drinks from it. Returning to their ship, they found it to have been sabotaged by demonic quasits, despite their fairy dragon companion's best efforts to protect it. With no other choice before them, they activated a dormant plane shift circle and stepped into it, arriving instantaneously on the banks of a red river in what they could only assume was hell itself. They were immediately set upon by a lumbering swarm of hideous lemures, misshapen, misshapen protogenic wretches who attacked them relentlessly. In the midst of the furious battle, two hell wasps descended doing tremendous damage with their stingers filled with fiery venom. Tragically, Sechmet the tabaxi sorceress fell, and her unconscious form was carried away despite her companion's best efforts to save her. No doubt she has endured a grisly death. After the rest of the fiends were slain, Cordelia, the fallen Azamar cleric of death, emotionally destroyed by the loss of both Shane and Cordelia, the two cornerstones of her emotional life, threw herself into the nearby river Styx, surrendering herself to the oblivion it provided. Utterly defeated, the adventurer's grief was interrupted by the arrival of a strange fey creature who called himself Smiler. After a tense exchange, they agreed to go with him to what he claimed would be safety. Friends, I'm going to uh, invoke the DM's prerogative here. Uh, I was uh, DMing two absent characters, uh, or uh, role-playing two absent characters last game, and uh, something happened right towards the end that I wasn't expecting, and uh, I have... I, 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 uh, I don't feel good about having a character completely be destroyed when they're not present to have a say in it. So we're going to briefly rewind to the moment when right after 
Cordelia has thrown herself into the sticks. Artem is looking down upon her as Jexter has his conversation with Smiler. Um, there she sits in the pool, sort of slumped over to one side, the water rushing by her, sort of taking her clothes that float along the top of this oily, disgusting substance that sits on top of the river. Um, her eyes are large and innocent, and she looks up at you, Artem. Artem is crying. Bacon. And he looks at Cordelia, who he finally felt like he connected with um, in the in the Astral Sea, and through his tears, he just looks at her and he says, I'm so sorry. And he shoots a firebolt at her. All right. She has no understanding of what's happening. The firebolt emanates from your hand, strikes her right in the chest. And her eyes go wide with pain as some of her clothing is burned and she begins to scoot away from you, sort of an animalistic instinct to get away from the pain, moving further into the water. And I ready another one to finish her. As can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> as this happens, Zelmira, who is still entirely, her mouth is obscured by this disgusting proboscis. She, the, you can kind of hopefully hear just like a gurgled scream emit from her face where her mouth should be. And she throws herself in the pathway of Artem's next firebolt. That would stop him. Okay. He, but it, in an effort to honor what he believed would be her last wish, he tries to move around you in an effort to do another shot. And it becomes clear that regardless of where Artem is going to try to relocate himself, Zelmira will match him and refuses to let him pass and is trying to communicate with her eyes that this is not his place, like he shouldn't be doing this. And also trying to convey, I mean, tears are streaming down her face at this point too. And, his. and trying to convey as best she can without the use of language that she understands the pain and the hurt, but that this is not something that he can do in good conscience. He ultimately doesn't know that that's what she wanted. We're, we're trying like twin telepathy here. That's what well, I'm imagining. Uh, Artem, as skilled as you are with uh, shooting, um, uh, Zelmira is equally as skilled at um, deflecting and being in front of you when you know it. So um, unless you really want to commit to this, and in which case we'll need to roll initiative, um, she is going to successfully be able to block you your shot at every turn. Just will, by virtue of her class. Knowing knowing that he can't do anything and he does he's through his tears he doesn't have the words to to fight. He just collapses into her arms and cries. While this is happening, Cordelia moves further and further away from the bank, out into the water where it is moving relatively quickly and is quickly swept away, just floating in the river sticks, being carried away as you watch it and you see still raging on the opposite bank this battle this war this horror this carnage this incredible display of destruction being wrought by these two opposing fiendish forces and that my friends should bring us up to date i will quickly refresh as the uh the this tense exchange between Jexter and Smiler is concluded. Um, neither one of them really having the upper hand, but Jexter definitely making his point across that uh, Smiler should probably shut up if he doesn't want to be magically silenced. But uh, Smiler also making his point that if they all want to live, they should probably come with the one person who is offering them any kind of hope. They all climb aboard his strange device and they begin to depart 
What kind do I have? What is the... It's a scavenger. Gotcha. So, adventurers, you cling to the sides of this gruesome contraption as it trundles across the barren landscape. Parts of it appear to be constructed of wood, but it's heavily armored, and a great deal of it is actually constructed of metal. It's black plates of metal that are banged and shaped around this aperture um, and then affixed with dozens upon dozens upon dozens of uh, rivets. Uh, there are spines and horns attached to it uh, of some large beast that are not wooden or metal. They are actually organic parts that have been strapped to it either by uh, cords, wire, or in some cases just nailed as well. Um, and there's a large grasping claw-like um, structure on the back protruding from the rear. And that, along with the horns and the spines, give this machine a beast-like appearance. Indeed, when Smiler first activates it, um, it emits a scream, sort of a... <laughs> that then devolves into a roar sounding both as, as if it's in pain and also enraged. Um, and as you are holding onto it, you, you, don't, you have the feeling that rather than being on a machine, you're actually riding some kind of horrible animal. Uh, Smither does his best to keep uh, to easy terrain, but occasionally a sudden rock or a ditch requires you to grip tightly to the machine and each other or risk falling off. There is just enough room for all of you to just find an area to just hold on, wrap an arm around, or hold on to each other, wrap your hand around a, a cord and sort of hang off the sides. Um, and several hours pass like this. Uh, the river sticks, the sounds of the terrifying battle are well behind you. Smiler slows and eventually comes to a stop. You all groan and sink to the ground, your muscles screaming from holding tension for so long, but there's no real relief from the ground as the heat emanating from it just penetrates you. And at the same time that you feel the heat coming up from the ground, you feel as if there's some horrible, oppressive will pushing down upon you from the top. So you're actually being sandwiched between these two forces. Uh, the uh, terrain around you is utterly deserted, except for the bleached bones of this enormous creature that just lies strewn about the ground in this particular location. Adventurers, what do you do? You all look terrible. Where the fuck are we? Elmira looks to Artem and is just kind of clawing at her face kind oh. of begging with her eyes you know assuming he knows something about how this could be removed signaling she... for help <laughs> what can we do for her oh she is that just... not how she usually looks <sighs> no oh that's that's fantastic news. I was going to say, what a waste of beautiful eyes and hair and, well, everything, really. It's just gorgeous. And then that mouth. Help I've... her. Right. Sure. Um, yes, I think I can do that. Um, I can, actually. I, I, if, if I'm not mistaken, she came in contact with maybe a little bit of a, some... Demon insides got a little splattered across her, and then soon enough she's bugging out of the teeth. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's what right. I okay, definitely can fix this. I have some bad news though. It's a terrible process. I have, I have what can cure her on my person, but it's, it's a substance secreted from most terrible of beings, you see. Um, sometimes, when a wound is made, one must cauterize it with fire, making the wound worse for a time, but allowing someone to live on after. So this, these mighty beings, cry a substance so foul that even the thickest glass I carry can barely shield it from me. Is it worth it? 
will you take this on to restore your former self? Can you bear to be bathed in this foul substance? What Ian, is it? can I insight Smiler to see if he is lying? Sure, roll an insight check there, Jexter. I would like so to So Zelmira is just getting visibly aggravated by all of this talk, <laughs> talk, talk, talk. She's so, an action lady. <laughs> right. If you if you detect anything that is untrue, the only thing would be is he is perhaps being a little over dramatic. Takes an actor to know an actor. However, so with my with my insight of twenty one, that's what I'm yeah, able to get. Yeah, but but that uh, it takes an actor to know an actor. That said, he is not lying about how he feels about the substance, <clears throat> and he's also he, not lying about the fact that he thinks it's going to work. I so he takes a um, a bit of uh, cloth from the <clears throat> pocket of his coat and removes it and sort of begins to slowly unfurl it. He has it held far at arm's length and there's kind of a lip is curling up as he's unfurling this black cloth. And um, as he looks away wincing, he takes out a clear glass stoppered bottle. Inside is crystalline clear liquid. Ready? What, what, what is it? What's in it? Like I said, the secretions of the foulest of beings. Poop, he pops it open right on top of the head. Take a deep breath. Do you need something to bite down on really hard? Artem offers her his Oh, hands. right. She's got no mouth. <laughs> so she'll be fine. Maybe, never mind. And he, uh, uh, I'm so sorry. Uh, and he dumps it on top of her head. As this liquid splashes on top of your head, it is actually deliciously cool. Um, the uh, the heat that is coming off of the ground for a brief moment just completely vanishes, and you feel as if something benevolent and beautiful has breathed upon you. And immediately, this thing that is on your mouth turns black and cracks and just <laughs> falls off onto the ground and turns into dust and your tongue feels a little sore and your mouth certainly around where this thing has been is a bit uh, corroded from the corrupted, corrupted influence of what this thing was but the holy water has had its effect and you are cured of this aberrant mutation Ugh. Elmira gasps for breath and puts a hand out to steady herself on Artem and begins kind of just feeling around her face, kind of wincing when she touches the spots that are a little bit raw, but is visibly relieved. And for a second is so relieved that she's distracted from the horror that she has encountered so far. Lucy. Unfortunately, after just a few moments like sweat in the desert. The water is evaporated and you return to reality. She has all her teeth too. Wonderful. When does the bad stuff happen? You don't want to go through what she just did. Trust me. What is it that I just went through? I, I, I feel fine. Did you not feel an immense weight, as if the liquid wanted to tear your very essence from your body. No, it was more like a salve than any other negative thing. Oh, well, that's the most, that's the first disappointing thing I've learned about you, but I'll get over it. I'm very glad for you. Thank you, by the way, and she kind of just goes to be near Artem. Oh, you're welcome. That's the first thank you I've gotten for all of this. <clears throat> Where are we going? So... It, it, we're we're going to end up is a be 
beautiful place. Um, especially considering our current surroundings. Um, it's not necessarily a place in so much as that it is always in a different place, or at least is frequently in a different place. A great friend of mine um, runs it, and they move across the plains of Avernus, setting up shop in different places all the time. Um, you can get anything your heart desires there, provided you have the means to pay. And see, that's where we're going to end up, but the means to pay is going to be a detour. We need... It's going to be impossible to find it if, basically, if it doesn't want to be found by us. It's kind of the way I understand it, at least. So we're going to need some, some coin to spend. And I know where to get some. So that's where we're going to go. But first, I can explain all of this later in much more detail. Don't worry. I will. I promise I will do that. Um, but, uh, but, but before we do that, as I said, um, you look up, I mean, much improved, uh, Miss, uh, what is your name again? I... My name is Selmira. Selmira. That's, well, anyway, um, much improved, but the rest of you all still look terrible. At least, I assume you have looked better at times, unless this is, anyway, I can provide some cover for you to rest. Belitis looks, looks exactly the same. Yeah. Belitis looks exactly the same. He, he still looks terrible, but he just looks exactly Sweet the same. Sweet Belitis. Selmira <laughs> looks too... That 16-year-old human boy looks awful. <laughs> he looks really bad. <laughs> looks like a turtle. <laughs> looks to Jexter, Belitis, and Artem, and... I mean, she's trying to communicate with her eyes still, because... She's not trying to give anything away. Do we trust him? Artem will look at her in a resigned way as if to say, what choice do we have? Accepting that, Zelmira takes out one of the glass pieces that Shane gave her and begins kind of twiddling or like running it through her fingers, turning it over in her hand. And kind of just shrugs and starts to go into herself. I assure you, they have much better jewelry where we're going. That's... Ugh. He just gives him the darkest look. Smiler, Ooh. I have a question for you. What was it you introduced yourself as? Smiler the... What was <laughs> well. that title again? I, I don't mean to brag or anything, but I have been... <laughs> many have called me Smiler the Defiler. Now Smiler, no smiling. The Defiler of what? Depends on the day. Depends on the... Undefiled, I suppose. Between us, only Artem here is undefiled, and I'm working on that. But what brings you to our assistance, Smiler? Um, he kind of looks about the group just a little bit, taking all of you in. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, it's a... You could say that we have found each other at a time of mutual need. And what is it that you need? Something we have? Something we can give you? Could you repeat that? My ears stopped working. What, what is it that you need, Smiler? <laughs> I need... He looks at you and his eye, just regarding you, his eyes open and there is just this intense... Um, there's a sharpness and intrigue and an interest and the grin is always persistent. 
Hmm. You do know a thing or two. I've been looked I... at that way before, Smiler. I don't appreciate that yet. But you still haven't told me what you're after. I... <laughs> Let's just say... What I need to do... Your safety's along the way. And you only need to go with me that far and... Well, let me help you. We are a crew that's known for going too far, Smiler. What happens if we do? If you go too far? Yes. Well... Th then that's your mistake? But... If you prove where yourself... Where are we again? And where are we going that's never in the same place twice or some such nonsense? Are we going to I a magic you... castle? Tell uh, me we're going no. to a magic castle. It's more like a caravan, really. Um, it's called... I can imagine what passes for horses in this place. Uh, yeah, we don't have those here, um, except occasionally for eating um, when they wander down here. There was one... Actually... You know, it must have it must have been a little while ago. There were like there were thousands of horses here for a little bit. All these, uh, you know, shiny creatures with metal armor charging through as if they thought they could actually accomplish something. But mostly, we just ate the horses after they were all done pretending to, I don't know, crusade or gallivant or something. But there was a change of leadership <sighs> okay. here. Anyway, it's all very it's all mean, very confusing. Do you mean holy warriors, what... Smiler? Do you mean holy warriors? That's what I... It's just, they're, they're synonyms, right? Holy warriors? Yeah. Paladins, crusaders, holy oh, warriors. Oh, God. Did they try to tell you how to live your life? They do that to me all the time. <laughs> yeah. Well, they tried to, you know, completely wipe this place off of the earth. So that tells you all you need to know about them. They're so um, serious. They're like, I'm a holy warrior. I'm a holy warrior. That's exactly how they talk. You've God. met them. They're terrible. Repent or die. Tell Mira is very over this conversation See, and she walks up to Jexter, looks him in the eye and says, there is time for this later. And then she fixes her gaze on Smiler. You mentioned respite. You mentioned help. You're sitting here regaling us with stories about doomed horses. I, I was forward, only please. being polite clearly he's warmed up to me if he's asking me all these questions after cursing me and then telling me to shut up i knew it would happen i promise you'll warm up to me eventually everyone does well you might want to start with getting it's... us something that you've promised us which is somewhere to recover artem did this he just threaten right? to set us on fire artem is still detached and and despondent at the moment artem right everyone I'm back um, you don't have to be in the machine, but everyone just pick a spot you know, around here if you want to set up your little camp or something. But I will just cautious, caution you, um, do not try to get comfortable. That is a waste of effort. You will not get comfortable, so just get used to it and um, pass out somewhere, I guess, wherever you want. I'll Zomira keep watch. moves towards Arden to assist him up onto... Are we going back onto the Infernal Machine? doesn't appear that way. Mm, so no. where are we exactly? <laughs> so you're in the plane, I mean, looking around this this black sort of reddish, dark reddish stone and sand. And uh, now that you're a farther away from this battle, the, the battle itself <laughs> seems to have a corrupting influence on the surrounding area. The closer to it, the more um, inflamed, for want of a better term, the um, terrain becomes. Now that you're far away from it, it is much more akin to a a desert or a, or it's a, a barren, like the aftermath, like hundreds of years have passed over a area that was completely wiped clean by battle after battle after battle, just marching armies, destruction, explosions, and then moving on. And then another battle explosions just completely grinding down whatever terrain was here to this featureless desert you can't really see anything in view other than 
these bones I described, and looking into the distance, um, you see an orange glow at the very edge of the horizon, um, looking either like a sun that's about to rise or about to set. So are we're there exactly, any? Yeah, sorry. Are there any rock rock formations kind of around too? Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's not. You couldn't really call them a formation. Just maybe like. Uh, leftover debris from uh, a large explosion that had kicked up a boulder or two, but in terms of like a formation, like something you'd find in the American Southwest, then no. But uh, just random debris, um, maybe a, a pool of some sort of steaming liquid uh, here and there. Um, as you were driving, occasionally you would see a fissure uh, that had uh, smoke and lava sort of slowly seeping out of it. Once or twice, a uh, meteor just cascading across the sky and landing off of the distance and exploding. Um, but yes, uh, the most the most uh, interesting thing in this particular area is this uh, large collection of bones. And they are massive bones. Whatever this creature was, it was humongous. The skull is uh, at least the size of... Uh, with half of the machine that um, the, that uh, Smiler was driving, uh, with enormous snout and razor sharp teeth, just rows and rows and rows of it. Um, so Smiler. Well, we found it. Where do you purport to take us? So it's it's my friend Mahadi's place. It's called the Wandering Emporium, and there I am certain he can get you guys home so that's where i'm looking to get you because i'm grateful that you um scared off those bugs because and you know you're uh com uh oh Sacrifices not be forgotten <laughs> yet <laughs> we just lost you for a moment that's all <laughs> it was just um, terrifying moment of pause. That's all. Yes, we were just blinded by your magnificent smiler. So tell me, um, <laughs> will they be welcoming we, us when we arrive? If we, if we take the detour. So right, they can get you home, right? My friend Mahadi at the Wandering Emporium will get you home. That's where I intend to get you in the end. Oh. But first, we need to make a pit stop, and I need your help at a place, a wonderful place. Pit stop known as the spawning trees. There's Are you going a, to defile um, them? Is that a descriptive name? Oh, yes, I am. Uh, is it a descriptive name? Is that what you asked? That is what I asked. It is a descriptive name, indeed. I believe that spawning tree is a descriptor of... The spawning part is a descriptor of the tree, and that's kind of what happens there. See, there's these um, wonderful little beings that seem to just form like like um well like disgusting meat sacks in the trees and then they <laughs> drop down and then these um i guess they're called abyssal chickens in common that's a um it sounds really silly when you say it um in common that way um the infernal has a much more you know to it it sounds mm -hmm more dignified ordering it on a menu. Anyway, so if we go there, I know we can get some coinage. We need some coinage in order and to get into Mahadi's. So, oh, so he's such a good friend that you're paying him for us being able to stay with him. I, I mean, you're my friend, he's my friend, maybe it's, you, you know. You often pay your friends? For their services. Interesting. That before, if they're professionals, I don't ask for freebies from my friends just because they're my friends. Freebies. Hmm. So Mir <laughs> looks over to Arden just to check in. Yeah. Right. Anyway, if this is fine, um, I'm just going to go. I'm just going to cover us up if you don't mind. I Richard, think... Artem is not actually laughing, but I can I cannot <laughs> stop laughing at these exchanges. This is just, this is gold. All right, so Smiler, what right. do you do? Make yourselves uncomfortable, and he begins to wave his hands around, and it looks, um, for a moment, like uh, the um, ground around them is shifting, and sort of the um, 
uh, rumbling and stuff, and it looks for a moment like the like you're falling through the ground, but indeed it's just a sort of harmless image of the flat terrain just rising up above you, and he creates sort of a bubble as he's painting it with his hands, almost like expanding an image on a screen or something, like he's dragging bits around, placing rocks, drawing fissures and such, and creating sort of this illusory hill just a um that encompasses the machine and the area they are and then he will kind of wave his hands in a couple other spots and um grow some pillars of stone in such a way that so it looks like if someone were to drive a machine or something straight into this hill they would cause damage to it so making it a geographical feature that covers them but also um, prevents anyone from trying to do any uh, sick jumps off of it so <laughs> that would be awful like a goblin <laughs> oh that'd be cool parkour <laughs> parkour so parkour! he has cast parkour! a large illusion spell over the top of us called illusory terrain to mm. allow you to rest and that has a good plenty smile. of uh, plenty of duration <laughs> long enough for you all to take a long rest if you wish and I said incorrectly, it's a hallucinatory terrain. So there you go. Long rest sounds good. Artem is going to just find a corner to sit, but he is tucking his knees to his chest. His tail is wrapped around him. He is um, in a position that Zelmira knows he is hurting um, when he gets in that mode. Sort of the equivalent of a child curled up in a fetal position. Belmira tries to arrange herself so that she can be cradling his head in her lap and kind of like stroking his hair in a way that they used to do when they were children. Mm. Why did Sorry. you stop me? I mean, she'd already lost so much. I Maybe I was wrong. I'm but I don't, I just couldn't see someone else be totally gone. I know she's not mentally there, but I'm, I wasn't trying to undermine, I don't know what sort of conversations you'd had, but I couldn't, it was selfish probably, but I just couldn't stand to watch someone else be completely ripped away. I don't know what kind of things they can do to bodies here. I don't know what kind of things they can do to souls here, Sally. I just didn't want her to be... I wanted to free her. I no. think it's what she would have wanted. I. And he just buries his head in his arms. Selmira just tries to offer whatever comfort she can by way of, again, caressing his hair, rubbing the side of his arm. She leans down and gives him a kiss on the head. Whispers, I'm sorry. Can't imagine how any of us are going to get any sleep. Try to breathe through it. Like we always have when things get rough, just try to breathe through it. Can't stop thinking about Sekhmet getting pierced and carried. We experienced so much together. <laughs> What's happening to our family, Zelly? And entirely awful. But we have to take care of the people that are still with us. We still have Belitus, we still have Jexter. There may be hope. We just we have to we have to just push through. No matter what that means, we have to push through. And when you say Belitus and Jexter, it kind of snaps something in Artem's mind, and you see a very slight but a resigned nod. Lemire looks into Artem's eyes and gives him a firm nod herself. So, hey, with me. While the two of them are having this conversation, Belitis, is there anything that you do? Go 
first you're gonna have to unmute god i thought i was who's um, muted now jade <laughs> I will fight you. Uh, um, <laughs> um, he will. Another proboscis is in your future. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. He will just stare off, um, stare into the staff that has the gem that he placed inside it from Shamshul. And um, sits there and just closes his eyes and meditates, and will try to will two more of the same glows within the staff to represent mm. his lost friends. And he will just sit there in meditation, trying to stay strong. Well, while Belitus is meditating, I'm going to walk up to him and speak to him. All right. Belitus. Can't hear you, I'm meditating. Belitus. Yes, son. Have you ever been to a place like this? You've been around. I've never been to hell. I've been to some dark places. What would you give to get out of here? Would you give up your staff? Yes. It's only wow. A, it's only a bit of wood, boy. You know, you don't fool me. Sometimes I think when you stare into that staff, you're some type of evil mastermind. And you've got a, other groups of friends that you run around with and play with. And we're just one group of many. But that's silly, isn't it? I think I would give an arm and a leg to get out of this fucking place. I don't know if we are going to go out, my, my boy. You're always so very steady, Belitus. But I don't know that you're especially religious. Not everyone realizes it, but I'm compensating right now. How do you stay true? How do you stay steady, Belitus? Just try to focus your will. Just try to be who you are. If that falters down here, no one will think any little of you. You're a good kid, Jackster, regardless of what your parents might say. Shh, don't let it get out. If anyone found out I actually cared, it would entirely ruin my reputation. I spent years destroying my own reputation. Building it up now would be such a waste. You think we'll get out, Belitus? Sekhmet didn't. Cordelia didn't. Do you think we will? Yeah, you, you have to believe, or you might as well just give up now. Well, I hope that that shell protects you, Belitus. I'm not entirely certain that what Smiler's leading us towards is going to be a pleasant experience for us. I don't think anything's going to be pleasurable here. Oh, now that's an entirely different conversation, but I don't think it will be pleasant. I've got no idea what you mean. 
No, I don't suppose you do. Sweet Belitus. Sweet Belitus. Well, as you all find what comfort you can here amongst the bones and rock and sand, sleep does not come, but you are able to rest. You're able to inure yourself somewhat to the heat and simply sitting not doing anything for a long period of time seems to have a restorative effect although it is an interminable amount of time that you sit each time that you shift you think oh, did I sit in that position for an hour a day or was it just a few minutes there's no sun, no moon, no way to determine the time. All you can do is look over and see Smiler sitting on his infernal machine, gazing up and out, unchanging, seeming to indicate that it is not yet time to leave. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. a long rest is... Mm -hmm. <laughs> he begins to sing. <laughs> what do you sing, Smiler? Um, kind of looking around, he's just uh, softly singing. And, um, Rolling to Mahari's, we are bound away to the Wandering Emporium. We're sick and tired of dying. At least these ones, I think, are going to make it through to the Wandering Emporium. That's Off not a proper to song. See Mahari. The Wandering Emporium. That's not a proper oh, We song got a turtle and he smells kind of foul. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He and sleeps this. in a shell. <laughs> legs, arms, feet, and all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to start singing a proper song at the beginning well. of our long rest. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> what is a proper fact, song, sing, Jackster? I'm going to sing a song of rest. Excellent. Well, you are welcome to do that. However, it will not have the desired effects if it's not a short rest. Flavor, there you go. Yes. <laughs> what song do you sing for your song of rest? Oh, gods, I don't know. Some sort of wretched shanty, perhaps. Oh, wait, wrong show. Um, uh, something Fighting words. I don't know. Caribbean Blue or Ornoco Flow or some crap like that. I don't know. Oh, yes. And it is much more suitable for the uh, Plains of Furnace than whatever it was that Smiler was trying to sing. But uh, please mark on your uh, character sheets for a long rest. Um, and uh, eight hours have passed and Smiler stands and stretches and it's time to eat. Do we have anything? And I will do anything. Wait, what? I have still have ten right. provisions. Oh. If no one has any, I will hand them out. Oh, so kind of you. <laughs> That's okay. How much further do we have to go? That's hard to say. Um, oh, right, because this place moved. Try, also, Smiler. Or? Try. Mm. I it. I think it's that way. Um, as far as I know. I think it's that way. Fairly certain we'll end up there if we keep going. But it could be... Well, at least the time we just spent right here, it could be that times four. Or it could be an eighth of that. And you didn't think somewhere in between, I would say. Bring any provisions? We're just relying entirely on finding us. No, but it's been working so far. I did not intend to be pinned down beneath my own hallucinatory. Hallucin that is a that is a, a nasty one. Hallucinatory terrain. I did not intend to be pinned down beneath my own hallucinatory terrain, but thanks to you and the. You, 
right. Watching my words. Thanks to all of you, I was able to get out of that, uh, to which I am very grateful and am repaying all of you. And it just so happens that your friend has food. These things just type kind of happen to me usually. So, um, and look, ten, he had 10 rations. There's five of us. So even if it takes a while, we have two days and we can keep an eye out for food then. Mira has no appetite being in the throes of grief but knows that in order to be an efficient soldier she must consume food and so she does that. The Russians are not known for being particularly tasty but they mm. quite salted um, usually and uh, they're very well preserved and nourishing. They are they do the job that they're supposed to do. However, here as you take their first bite, tastes like ash. There's no flavor. Not even the slightest bit of pleasure to be gained from a bite of food here in Avernus. However, you do feel somewhat fuller having eaten. And Smiler loads you all up back onto the machine and begins to travel. Anybody have anything they wish to do or say on this journey? Belmira, just hearing that the food tastes like ash, does it also kind of leave like an ashen sensation in the mouth or is it just the taste of ash? It's just, it's just, there's no flavor there's no joy it's not even you don't even get the sense of how oh, i'm really hungry i'm eating something and eat. there's no there's no physical pleasure there's no release of tension it would be like being very very thirsty and drinking water having the thirst slaked but not deriving any pleasure from it and having experienced loss and grief before in her life with the loss of her parents. She has always kind of held on to whatever physical, sensory sensations she can to kind of ground her and root her in reality. And so as she takes a bite, she's anticipating the saltiness, the brininess of a ration and notices that she tastes nothing and so looks over to Artem, kind of gestures with her hand to the food that she's holding and asks, do you taste anything? Soot. It's, it's awful. Me too. And looks across to Belitis and Jexter to see how they're responding. I'm gonna say Belitis has got no taste buds. <laughs> he's just the <laughs> Sort of... He's like, nom, 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 nom. <laughs> mm, tastes better than lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> Just sort of little. It's an Artem. entire ration in one bite. Artem will look at Smiler. Uh, is, is this normal here? Uh, yes. In the same way that. Uh... You weren't able to find a comfortable place to lie down. You will find anything that sustains you will do just that. Um, this place does not take kindly to those, um, well, enjoying typical comforts. The really nice comforts, however, spot on. When you, you know, the, um, there's an immense amount of schadenfreude to be had here. watching bad things happen to other people, um, right? Yes, I do understand the term, but I so, don't understand why you would derive pleasure from that. That's like the, what the word means, but, um, you haven't ever, really? You, I don't know if I've misjudged you or if, hmm, well neither here nor there. 
Um, if you would like to gain power or domineer anything, um, you will find that quite pleasurable here. I just want to go home. And you, my fellow, um, are, are, are Artem. Artem, yeah. okay. They call you Ardy, but Artem, right. It's very strange to me. It seems like a, well, what's the word? Like a, you seem quite oxymoronic in this place. You're the one who looks the most like they should be here. And the one I'm to understand has the highest intellect, yet you have none of the answers and you look positively miserable and unable to inhabit this place. It's bizarre. Yeah, that sounds about right. If you keep that up, you're probably going to be next. But um, let's hope that's not the case. Delmira becomes immediately defensive. I've been fighting those prejudice prejudices my whole life, Smiler. Well, there's no prejudice against you here. <sighs> Understand. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. What do we need? Where are we going? What do we need to prepare for? Right. There we go. Eyes on the road. We are going to a place called the Spawning Trees, and surely there we will find some creatures. Um, these hunter-gatherer types that well, yeah, I guess that's the right term. Well, anyway, they gather the things that spawn there and typically sell them, and as such are often flush with coin. The coin that we need. So, so we are going to go there and take it. That is the plan. Is it not theirs? For now, but that's the plan. The plan is to make it ours. Couldn't we just harvest and sell ourselves? <sighs> I've never, you know, I, I like old, you know, debt here has uh, served me well. I think debt, yeah, she's barely debt right now, but um, she started off as Bernadette a few days ago. Then she was Erna debt, and now she's just debt. She's running out of energy. I'll have to rename her soon. But um, anyway, as we go, um, I, I just don't want to fill this thing with chickens and selling them. It's the whole thing of haggling and whatnot. So no, I think we just should take the coins because I, I don't think you can even earn a full soul coin from just a chicken, a bissel chicken. I still hate that word. Still sounds, still, still sounds stupid and common, but anyway, um, we, we should take the coins. We should kill them and take their coins. That is definitely the way to go. So now we're not just taking their coins, we're killing them for their coins. Yes. And that's the only way to handle this. It's the best way to handle it. Wait, we're, we're, we're killing the chickens? No, 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 no. The chickens have no monetary wealth at all, but the things harvesting them do. The thing, you say? Uh, yes. Oh. Devils. <laughs> oh. Friends of yours. Cousins. Um, I hope Family. not. That'd be awkward, but uh, yeah, we can deal with it when it comes. And here you go. <laughs> it won't be for long. <laughs> As Smiler drives across the plains of Avernus, a huge cloud of dust kicking up behind you, and you maintain this course for the better part of this day. I need everybody to roll a wisdom saving throw, please. No. Ugh about those. Was the um... Smiler too? You no, know, when, when I roll Not my smiler. wisdom check, I'm going to do so with my Kraken die. Me too as a giant well. d20. Me too. It's I'm so roll much mine. bigger than a regular <laughs> dice. And if you out there watching on the stream enter in exclamation point giveaway, then perhaps you too might roll better than a 13 with your Kraken dice that you could win. But alas, I so uh, that's a thirteen from uh, thirteen um, Jexter, and then from Zelmira. Natty one, baby. Natural oh, no. one. <laughs> Get wrecked. All right, uh, Smiler, you don't need to roll. Uh, Artie. Sixteen from Artem. Sixteen, and from Boletus. Twenty-four. Twenty-four. Sweet Boletus. Um. So, uh, ooh. 
I'm sorry, I meant to say constitution saving throw, but even with, if, if you all would have made it, uh, unless anybody has a negative to their constitution. Oh, <laughs> ah, what folly, I do. 21, uh, do you yes. have, Did you roll a negative one, dear? <laughs> it sounds like I rolled a zero. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the combination of the sleepless night and the heat and just this oppressive weighing down upon you, um, you are uh, suffering from one point of exhaustion. Classic. So, as the day draws on, you come across a small rise and then a valley of sorts. It's more of like coming off of a plateau. And in the middle of the plateau, you see a uh, bit of a caldera, um, the middle of which you could see um, streams of black liquid moving towards it from many different angles, almost like um, the central section of a spider and its legs sort of all extended around it. And as you look at it, as Smiler stops and there's this ridge and look at it, you can see that these, these tendrils are actually rivers or creeks of slow moving or maybe not even moving at all, just pools of long, elongated black and green and disgusting ichor. You recognize it as being the same ichor that uh, came from the bodies of the demons that you slew back on the floating citadel. And in the very middle is a large pool of it. Surrounding it on all sides are these bizarre trees growing up um, that have tendrils that are uh, snaking into this pool and they come up sort of a purple and green um, shape and the branches, it looked like it started off trying to be a tree, but then the branches instead of being round sort of flatten out and for a brief moment look almost like petals of an enormous orchid but then the very ends of these petals sort of uh, become sort of a, a decaying necrotic mass and at the edges of each of these petals you could see uh, green globules of uh, fleshy sacks just hanging from them sort of like um, uh, papaya fruit and there you are you're about um, about 300 to 400 feet away from it um, Smiler, you know from past experience that uh, some of the footing um, in and around these um, tendrils of, of uh, this ichor and the pool itself can be a little treacherous and not the best place to drive something as heavy as a infernal machine. Right. Time to park old debt here as she is quickly fading, and this is not a good place for her to go. So we will go on foot from here on out. I don't know oh, how mirror. useful. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that I move to assist Artem to his feet. Actually, he's probably assisting you since you're exhausted. <laughs> I'll help both trying. of you. She's the big sister. <laughs> I help By you two both. Seconds. <laughs> you're fabulous. I help you both. My God, thank you. Artem will uh, look at Smiler and, and say, I don't, I don't know how useful I'm going to be in a fight. I, huh, I really only have fire at my disposal. It's not going to do much to them, is it? No. Nothing, in fact. You... I guess I was right in my assessment about you. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to find some way to make yourself useful. Just keep keep thinking. Yeah. Yeah. He's useful in a lot of ways, Smiler. Are we marching now? We march it. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. I certainly hope so. And uh, yes, we're... Let's... Let's go. So you begin to make your way across the plain towards this large pool where these trees are sort of... You can, as you were walking, you could see that they seem to be moving as if being blown by a breeze, but there is no breeze. They're just moving, undulating back and forth, slowly waving their 
fruits. Um, what is your passive, Belitus? 16. 16. When you get about 100 feet away, you do see figures crowded around the bottom of one of the trees. Um, they do look somewhat familiar. Uh, they remind you of the creatures that you fought back in the uh, mansion as it was beginning to be consumed by the Astral Sea. These sort of purplish hided creatures with long tails, um, powerful builds, long glaives, um, and these beards that sort of have a mind of their own snaking the back and forth. Yeah. Indeed. Um, and as they are standing there, they're looking up and you can see something moving in the tree above. Uh, a little hard to see, moving in and out of around the, uh, the, the fronds of this thing. Um, and every now and then a green um, uh, postulated uh, pod just <laughs> comes down and <laughs> splits open and something jumps out of it and begins to run around and two of these uh, d devils reach over and grab it and stuff it in a sack. Watching over them is another uh, devil uh, looking as he, he is about the same in terms of build and size but instead of uh, the, um, the purplish skin he has very bright bronze looking skin um, and long horns that uh, stick up on top of his head that uh, the other devils do not possess and the glaive he is carrying is of um, much as a much more thick blade looking almost like um, rather than a glaive more like a, a battle axe like a large great axe on the edge of a pole arm just an enormous weapon with a very wicked looking blade have I got any idea what that is? That one? Uh, make a religion check. Religion plus five. Natural one. Natural one. But he, he definitely has the same beard. Uh, it seems to be moving with a little bit of a, of a life of its own. So you assume he's of the same species of devil, as far as you could tell. But um, definitely looks different. Oh, that's, that's how it has bearded creatures. <laughs> that way, fool. Oh, where? Oh, right. Ooh. Well, <laughs> and a big one with horns. Yeah, I'm seeing him. Ah, I wasn't expecting to see him here. Lucky us. Ooh, this is. Well, no. there will be more coins than I was expecting. That's for sure. So he's definitely a friend of yours, and he's going to he donate is. the coins to you, yes? Um... Yeah, with your help, he definitely will. Um, but we just need to persuade him frequently with weapons and pain and death. Perhaps I could just speak to him. <laughs> That's a good idea, Jackson. You are quite persuasive. I like your optimism. Um... So, have you dealt with devils before? Well, I mean, excluding current company. Uh, he really doesn't count, I think we've learned. I met you once or twice. Oh, wow. You are warming up to me. Is that a threat to set me on fire? <clears throat> we got off track somewhere. So, um... Right, the, the, what exactly were you going to say? What was your plan? Well, if we need coin from him, I could just go and ask him nicely. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, do we know of a spell that, uh, that you have in your arsenal where that would be like... The past, would be... <laughs> in the past, you have seen Jexter get his way remarkably so. Maybe not with the devils. Jexter, if there was just one, maybe, but that's a, there's a lot. <laughs> Zelmira will offer to Jexter, being someone who is quite persuasive when she wants to be, to go and assist. Again, uh, <laughs> I wow. need to agree with. So Smiler, I was. But... What? No, I was. A... I hate to agree with Smiler, but I, I 
I don't think these are negotiating circumstances, guys. Well, you've never steered me wrong, Artem. I mean, there was the one time that you told me about that one book, but I don't blame you for that. <laughs> Smiler, is there a is there a spot we could sneak attack? Is there a place we could catch them off guard? Maybe. I had a thought about a little ruse. Um, as far as the terrain goes, is there any way to sneak up on them? It sounds like it's kind of that. I mean, open. It, it is, but they are distracted. There are trees um, that you could hide behind, and there is, as I said, a sort of a caldera, so there is a, a little bit of a rise than th this um, uh, lake of Iker is. And it, um, with very good rolls, uh, it is certainly something you could you could get closer than you currently are. I mean, you're um, not that far away from them now, and they have not noticed you. So, is the do I recognize that particular bearded devil as well? Uh, from um, from Belitis's description, you do indeed. Um, this would be the uh, bearded devil known as. Garakazed. Um, having spent a decent amount of your life now in uh, uh, Hells, um, you know that the way devils are made is uh, they they actually have within them, to a more greater or lesser extent, the potential to grow into other things. They basically, if they demonstrate that they are better than their um, Fellows, at least, like for example, if you are a a imp that distinguishes yourself amongst all of your imps, then a higher level devil can sort of summon out of you a devil that's at a um, a, uh, a higher echelon of power, and so on and so forth. And he's Derek, up for promotion. He's up for promotion indeed. <laughs> he is a senior junior executive. Yes, he is a up and comer. Keep your eye on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so from the trees, how far would those trees be from the the group, John? So uh, there are several trees. They are at the foot of one. Um, there's one that is about uh, 25 feet away from them, then the one that is about 25 feet away from them, and so on and so forth. So somewhat evenly spaced around the outskirts of this uh, pool. And you are approaching it from the south. You, they, are, they are on the north. So if they are at 12 o'clock around this pool, you are coming at it from 6 o'clock. Do you think we can quietly approach? I have a way of making them easier to hit. Ooh. Oh, that's a good idea. Where are, um, have Ashenbaum and Ashenmal uh, made yeah. themselves aware in the, uh... You have not heard them or had seen any sign of them since you have arrived in Avernus. Um, Artem will call out quietly. Ashenbon? Ashenmal? Shut up. Are you there? Shut up. Oh. oh. Uh. We could really use your help. Yeah. Listen. Happy to help. If it comes to that, but... Well, while you're around this guy, we, we, we're not gonna do a thing. Okay. I... I understand. We, we, we said we sensed he was in the prison. We, we, could, we could tell he was there when we first arrived. Bad, bad news. Do, do you have any suggestions for an alternative plan? Um, you guys are going all right so far. I mean, if it looks really bad, we'll, we'll probably just fly away if it's all the same to you. <laughs> If, uh, hey, I'll, if, I'll protect you as best I can. Yeah, that's, that's great. That's very nice of you. He's... He's a very bad fae. Very bad, very bad fae. We'll be 
careful. I mean, if, if something comes close to you, we'll, we'll do what we can. But, uh, yeah. He's not gonna like us if we're around. He's, he's gonna... Yeah. I get it. I get it. Okay. Nice talk. Yeah. Good talk. Trees! Trees! Let's go! And... I, we might have, um... There may be an idea, um, to allow us to get a little bit closer. Uh, we'll make our presence known. I don't know, it'll... If we get caught sneaking up, that's one thing, but if we just get seen walking up, accompanied by me, who, if they've heard of, um, in with my newly captured servants that are maybe for sale. I'm... Excuse me? <laughs> I thought it's we an were idea. Afraid. It's a ruse. It's a ruse. It's a great ruse. And Ooh. this, and if one part, you know, uh, tries to say, "Oh, I will," you know, betray this situation and say, "No, actually, take Smiler," but then you know he has that sort of voice, right? The Jex the Jexter, of course, I'm talking about. He can really sow some doubt, even to creatures as confident as myself. Um, that was quite effective, what you did before. If you can do that to the big guy, I have some things that I could do to help, uh, well, make um, our repeated persuasion of him uh, a little bit easier. Would you be willing to try that out? Am I making myself clear? Yes. Good. Is that the plan? I mean, I thought they didn't want me to speak to him, but, you know, I suppose. Well, not... You're not gonna persuade a devil to give up his souls. That's just... Souls? I, mean, I thought we were talking about coins. Eh. You know. Wait, potato, tomato. Something? I'm afraid we don't know. They're the, they're the one and the same. We are going to get... Uh, this uh, is a euphemism, co Souls right? in coins. Whose souls? Ah, schmucks. Schmucks? Who? Okay. I mean, I... anyone who's really someone that gets sent to the hells gums up as a devil. I mean, the but if you're kind of mediocre and all you are Wait, is just like any, a life anyone... force that goes to hell, then they usually put you in a coin. Anyone that someone turns into a devil? Well, I mean, if... Uh, wait, what's the question? What's falling from the trees? Chicken. That's chicken. <laughs> it does look And why like are something. the chicken valuable? I thought we covered all of this. I still don't understand. Are all we right. sacrificing children? Allow me. <laughs> allow me to interrupt. <laughs> I, 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 can, I, can, I can actually explain it better. <laughs> all right. So, uh, from these trees are coming uh, just growing these uh, abyssal chicken. Right. Um, they are of value because uh, it would probably have been explained as you were driving that uh, they are one of the few things that um, actually have flavor here in Avernus. Uh... Um, so they are of value. They're not okay. of tremendous value, but if you sell enough of them, you can turn a profit. Um, and you are going to relieve that profit from these creatures. Uh, the oh, chickens, yeah. them, the chickens themselves, not all that dangerous. Um, the creatures harvesting the chickens, however, much more dangerous. Well, yes. Okay. So, so I was it, like, "Are we harvesting baby chicken souls? Like, no. what are we doing?" And uh, uh, no, Swyler has just informed you, of course, of the primary um, unit of uh, commerce here in the Hells, which is, of course, soul coins, a uh, coin made of uh, fell iron. Um, a, um, Infernal iron uh, that is um, contains a, a soul. Um, however, that's neither here nor there. What is the plan for dealing with these devils? Well, I believe I that muted, the plan sorry. was something about Jexter and Smiler going up and uh, Jexter using unsettling words and persuasion and other. Things. I was just going to say, are we, are just to meta a little bit, do you think that that's a, a, a more solid plan than a, a full frontal attack with catching them off guard? 
I thought that Smiley wanted us to pretend to be his. No, yeah, that's what he. That's what he explained. Yeah. I'm just trying to think. And then, that. and then suddenly attack. Ha! A ruse. I mean, I guess we could try it. Okay. They can try he, it. The, 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 the beardy, soon to be horn guy is a. Uh, is uh, very dangerous, just so you know. Um, you have beautiful, um, actually very like strong-looking fingers, Elmira. They're like, you know, it's, they look very nice. Um, and he will probably want those as his new belt buckle. You see, he loves. Um, yeah, I mean, like. He does this thing where you can kind of he clasps the fingers together around his waist. Um, your hands would be perfect. He that loves won't be happening. hands. That will not be happening. So he he has a belt of hands. Um, Mine will not be contributing. He, he has a what? A hand belt. Like they're shaking several, each several, other. And... Several, in fact. He has like a bandolier and. He belt. has hand bandoliers, in fact. Yes. Bandoliers. You got it. <laughs> You got it! Somebody got it! All right. Uh, Belitis, you were going to say something? Uh, well, I know these things are poisonous, so we need to be careful. And he will place his hand on Zilmira, and a glow will come from the staff. A green glow will come from one of the stones from there, arc up, and just sort of like um, sort of sprinkle over you like dust. And he will cast protection from poison mm, protection from poison very nice Thank all you. right um as you make your way up um are you making any effort to sort of show that you are prisoners as per smiler's brilliant plan and this is the plan you're going to go with all right and uh, uh jexter you are accompanying smiler up along like sort of away from the group to try and confront these i look at smiler Smiler, can I have your hand? He holds it out. I hold it and we start walking happily to a, towards the devils. <laughs> oh my goodness. Skipping the rest of you maybe? follow. All right. Look enthralled so. by me, please. Uh, it does not take long. Actor. As you come around the corner of this, I'm going to put you in this area here. Oh dear. If you could draw yourself, uh, put yourselves on the um, the uh, bottom part of the, um, the map here, around this area. Around which area? Make sure I'm on the right area, so you're... Oh, where Artem is. Yes. yes. Boink. Oh, goodness. Stop moving the map. I didn't move the map. Of course you didn't. <laughs> Wink. Someone else must have done it. My Smiler token does not work. Oh, oh no. Son of a gun. Um, how do I do that before? Well, I would like to remind everyone that we're doing a dice giveaway. If you happen to be watching in Twitch and you can see the chat channel, if you have not entered yet the Kraken Dice Giveaway, please do use exclamation point giveaway. As you can see from Jade, our lovely model, they've got them big if you need them. I think that's 150 millimeter. Is that what that one is? You want to kill a man with a D20. <laughs> this, is your, <laughs> this is your thing. That's taking it to a whole different place. Yeah. Um, but really, Kraken Dice, they've got some great stuff. They've got some some cool dice that look like this. They have dice sets that they're the dice sets, by the way, I would mention. We're not just giving away like, here's some dice. There's a miniature D20, two regular D20s, a giant D20, four D6s, and a D2. Can I put this with down? With a Kraken symbol. Put yes, you can put it down. <laughs> yes, uh, you may. P P Peter, are you able to move the token? Yes, yes, I'm all, all right. Good. Okay. Oh, vamping done. Vamping done. Thank you very much. Senor Vamp. Um, and now, for some interesting conversation. As you get to about there, um, 
up in this tree here, you see um, one of the, a, a creature that is hopping from branch to branch and has long claws and just cutting down these things that then fall with a green sort of landing on the ground and out comes this bizarre creature. Um, it has legs like a chicken and long um, fleshy wing-like appendages that it flaps as it runs. It doesn't appear to have any eyes. The top of its neck just sort of comes up into a point with an, uh, sharp teeth underneath it. But it's very small and it runs around in a circle as uh, one of these bearded devils just sort of runs over to it and picks it up and pops it in the head and throws it in a bag. And they've got a bag uh, with them as a, a very large um, amount of them apparently in it. But this creature that is on the top looking somewhat um, simian, except with long wings and a tail, um, red skin, looks over and sees you all approaching and it's come out of there, says something in Infernal. Uh, Belitis he says, we've got company. And the bearded devils turn immediately. One of them drops the sack and pulls up its glaive. And the other two. And then slowly turning to face you is the final uh, bearded devil. Looking like this. Oh, my goodness. He looks like a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, no doubt. Um, and he turns and faces you and puts his axe handle on the ground, leans on it, looks at you all. <laughs> Get Rock Zed! Smither. Still harvesting chickens, are we? Isn't this a little bit below your station? You're looking... Well, I've always thought of you as being above this kind of work. You're right about that. I'm right about many things. However, and... it is a very reliable way to make coin. And I need a lot of it for what I'm about to do. Which brings I... me to my next question. Why are you here? <laughs> I also need coin and have a proposition. Tell me, what is the one thing you could harvest here in Avernus worth more than these chickens. Two chickens. No, that's not it, is it? Got it. One of the. Sorry, you, you are speaking in Infernal, I assume. Um. Yeah. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So he is speaking to you in Infernal. Do you? Does anybody other than Belita speak Infernal? All right. So not Belita, yet. Belitis, Give you are a moment. you are following this. You are following. I do. This, Zelmira does. Zelmira, you are also following this conversation. More than chick. Many think. Get to the point. Souls. I have yes. some souls bound to me. In fact, I have rescued them. And, as such, they. Didn't really know it, but um, by their actions and by, well, the usual way, well, they've signed their souls to me. So there you go. Well, very good willing... for you. Whoa, 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 whoa. But here's the thing. I'm just, you know me, I'm just an aspiring defiler, so I don't have any use for these thralls at the moment, but I'm sure offloaded to the proper authorities, these pure of heart would be worth, well, quite a bit. I'm looking for- You say just pure of... of heart. Oh yes, you should have seen it. I'm going to look at Smiler. This and by the way, gorgeous I'm not blue one here. I've not let um, go of Smiler's I, hand. Okay. And and I look at Smiler is, and go, yeah, Sorry, am I, to get, am I lagging again? I'm sorry. Yeah, lagging. you got frozen for like a hot second. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, I'm not letting go of Smiler's hand, and I lean over to Smiler and mumble under my breath, we need to get closer. 
Yes. Yes. All right. Walking forward. So and I was at, saying, um, this beautiful one here. That before you the continue. hand. Yes, you're getting the hand. Sorry. Um, you have uh, you have stated a few things that are false. I'm going to need a deception check from you, Smiler. Honestly, I can uh, aid Smiler. with that. I'm <laughs> he, I'm I'm going to assist him. I'm going to. I don't know what he's saying, and I don't know how to know to assist him, but I'm going to look pretty. Uh, this is going to be <laughs> Unless you could come up with a brilliant way in which you could assist I have my a, well, I am ho I have I'm holding a plus, his hand. Well, I can understand what he's saying, and I have a plus six deception. So you are you are uh, proficient in deception? I am proficient understand in I understand right. what he's saying. I understand what he's saying. What do you do to back up the lie that, uh, that uh, Smiler has just said here? Much? You are you are enthralled to him that you are, your souls are bound to him that he has your souls to offer. Much to her chagrin, she kind of hopefully is able to like whisper to the group or at least like indicate somehow physically to look very much enthralled to him. Like it's not hard, honestly. Like let's be real, everyone looks pretty downtrodden. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But so she just lays up that aspect. So Zelmira says to do it, and you all listen. Great. Right. Yeah, so, yeah. You, uh, so that will constitute aid. So go ahead and make with advantage there. Aha. Uh -huh. All right. Trying to pull up my Kraken dice. No, uh, this, is a, this, right, is a, this is a roll that oh, Smiler is making. That's you just Smiler aided, roll. You aided Also him. with my Kraken dice here. I clicked do it, it on the thing, but it didn't. Dice. Here we go. <laughs> I've rolled double twelves for a nineteen. Ooh. Yeah, he's intrigued. How pure! Wait, I... Smiler, Smiler, I took his you... hand, which I haven't let go of. What's going on? All of you, follow me, slaves. Let's go. Um... You know what, Smiler. <laughs> I, I, I look at Smiler and I look into your eyes, deep into your eyes. I believe in you, Smiler. Don't let us down. Bardic inspiration. Oh. All right. So if you care to come to co uh, collect these, uh, what was I saying now? Oh, uh, what? Right. Oh, how pure is she? My goodness. I mean, first of all, just look at her. Bring her forward. Her crystalline... Damn it. I'm sorry. Just look at her. Crystalline nature. And I tell you this. Steal yourselves as I tell this tale. I dumped a vial of holy water upon her head. And she gasped with relief now there's a harrowing story All right, so pure does, of heart like never you've seen he does stop you before you get that close Zelmira uh, but so we will say that you get to about right there I was um, told to move my token so I just right. went for it <laughs> so where, where should we where should we put our tokens? I would like you all to be even or could here. you arrange us please yes I'll do that oh, that would be much easier and we've got yes, Alinas and Artem there he moves to there. The uh, divine uh, hand uh, guides our position. Indeed. And this creature flies forward and lands in the tree above you all. Looking down. How far up the tree? Uh, he's about uh, 20 feet up. Very good. And you want what? To trade? Precisely. You'll sign over her soul to me. With pleasure. And I'll throw in these three others for good measure. Why so generous, Smither? Well, I see what's uh, going on in uh, on your head. Um, I know who's up and coming. And I also need two soul coins. She's worth much more than that, I'm sure you can see. Just look at her. Just, hmm. 
Looks can be deceiving. Oh, you don't need to tell me. But, uh... Oh, darn it. Even if they In this aren't. case, it's true. Um, even if they aren't as pure as you claim they are, they will be of value. More than this had sack of fucking chickens. Kicks <laughs> it. At any rate. All right, Smiler. We can come to an arrangement. Give me these. And when I ascend, I will think fondly upon you in this moment. How does that sound? Hmm. What about the... I, I also need... Uh, I need a soul coin as well. But surely she's worth more than that. I'm not just... You understand. I can't just offer freely. It's not the way things are done here. It would be insulting to you and to me. One soul coin. If she proves to be as pure as you say, I'll give you a percentage of the profit I make. Say... Six percent. Shall we draw up the contract? We shall. Is it going well, Smiler? Or is it working? I'm worried. Perhaps you and I could go out of earshot to negotiate the final terms. I think they're be getting to become a little suspicious and my enthrallment is wearing off. Perhaps we could go over there and um, draw up these terms, agree on some Close verbiage. Is Zelmira. You are uh, 20 feet away, it looks to be. Gosh darn it. <laughs> And the thing she is, kind of shoots well, a look Smiler, over her shoulder. Smiler. Smiler's got no idea that Belitus and Zelmira speak with them. That's correct. Ooh. Yeah, Zelmira uh, definitely so, shoots a look over her shoulder. Uh, the two bearded devils come and stand a little bit more in front, looking at each other, looking at you all, sort of menacingly, uh, glaives at the ready, and... Gar uh, Garagzid uh, motions towards you, Smiler. Let's see how you draw, Faye. Well, I... Yes, please, um, I have been... Uh, they shouldn't, uh... Their time... Uh, excuse me, my hold over them, you know, of course, will not last forever, but I hope, um, it lasts just long enough let's go let's go then and i will try to draw him away as and if his back is turned um kind of just give a back a look back over to the group to be like just trying to buy you some time divide them i'm not know, letting go of smiler's hand <laughs> okay so uh you and jexter are going unless you do something to remove yourself from jexter uh, uh smiler um as he does for a little while i will um say kind of shake my hand off and say no you go back to the group i stay with you you stay here for one minute i might have drawn up the contract a little strongly worded there their, their consciousness seems to be a bit uh, affected. <laughs> um, well, but, uh, and he looks over continue. to one of the uh, uh, bearded devils who comes forward towards you, Jaxer, and he brings up his glaive. Looks like he's going to pop you right in the face with the butt of it. No, no, no! Please, un not do not damage them until the contract until the uh, uh, deal is complete. I request that at m as much. Garrick said, looks at you and says, "Damage to the body won't do anything to the soul." How do you know? Do you want to write this contract or not? How are you going to do that with his hand in yours? Uh, not even you are that clever. Well, will you will you at least have your um, 
servant here hold hands with him so he will stay put for a little bit. I think he just needs to hold something's hand for a little while. And the uh, bearded devil looks back at Garrick and grabs your wrist, puts it in his hand. Good. Good. Shall we? Let's go. Just hold his hand. I'll be right back. So you and Garrick Zed goes over to here. <laughs> Wait, can you head. can you trace the path, Sean? Of, I'm sure. Uh, where did? But where was he immediately before that spot? He, you said he was here, right? Mm -hmm. When he gets to that spot, I'm going to cast. Uh, uh, fairy fire and get all three of them. All right. There. Well, then, doing beginning to cast a spell. Yes. Is going to initiate initiative. So let us go ahead and roll initiative, and then we will take a bit of an early break, and then um, we will come back and. Uh, am have am this I come. grappled? Um, we will see. Did I take damage? You have not taken damage. Okay. No damage has been taken. Uh, he's just holding your hand. He's not. I mean. He's strong. If his turn goes before you, then you probably would be considered grappled. But if not, then you could easily move your hand out. Um, okay. So, uh, do -do 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 -do. let's do some initiative. Keep rolling, rolling, rolling. And do -do -do. Jeez, that's a that's a high one. Come on, Artie. Oh, son of a bitch. <laughs> uh, the initiative seemed to be favoring Smiler and a bearded devil. Not so, so let me much. just make oh, sure we've up. got them all. Smiler is at the top with the bearded devil going next. Zamira, Garaxed, Imbolitus, and Jexter at the bottom. So that will be our initiative. Where's Artem? We'll come back. Artem, you're I'm not there. there. Are you? Oh, I was, I was in there. 17, 14. I should be in there. You didn't make it on for some reason. I was for a moment. What happened? I see you with 1714. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just roll again and edit your thing menu. I will do that. Well, as the adventurers have spent their first night and most of day in hell under the uh, care of Smiley the Defiler, they have made their way towards a place called the Spawning Trees, where they hope to recover a great deal of what Smiler has referred to as coinage, with which they will be able to perhaps barter their way out of hell. But first, they must defeat Garrick Zed and his bearded devil bodyguards. At the top of the order, we have Smiler the Defiler. Um, they've come loose. I have lost control. Oh no! <laughs> hmm? Um, <laughs> action, bonus action, movement. Yeah, Perhaps. yeah. So I'm, I'm just. Uh, you had a whole ten minutes break. to figure it out. I had the whole break <laughs> to think of what to do, but um, you know, uh, oh, this works out. So I'm just gonna be, um, oh, to. Hell with it, I guess. <laughs> um, I will just make. I will just attack the one uh, holding Jexter. All right. Oop, that's not how that works. I'm gonna roll Aww. twice. Uh, protecting me. I have a natural twenty on my oh, first roll. Oh, excellent. What's the so, power of? Well, it's not love. My short something. sword. Um, it comes. Uh, he quickly whoosh, whips it out and does a little bit of a flourish. And then um, he kind of never stops moving with it and does two, whoosh, whoosh, two quick swipes. Uh, the first one obviously hits uh, hard. I get rolled a five and a four, so 10 plus nine, 19 points of damage. Got on it. First Ooh, what are you wielding? Hit, a uh, magical short sword. Thank you very much. And my second attack is a 24 for um, another 10 points of damage. Wow. That's fast math. Just so 
even before, as Artem in the back begins to cast his spell, and they all begin to look in alarm as they realize that they are being attacked, before anybody can even blink, Smiler, you you've carved uh, very large chunks out of this bearded devil. Part of his beard actually detaches from his face and lands on the ground and writhes a bit before going still. And he's like, <sighs> and you can see that bloodlust begins to burn in his eyes. And there's almost a grin as he begins to sort of salivate at the prospect of making you look a lot less pretty. It is now, um, okay. Oh, are these trees like, I, are there like footholds in them? Would they be easy to stand in? Uh, perhaps. I mean, they are moving. They don't. <laughs> You're familiar with hell. Anything that looks like it could be dangerous is probably potentially dangerous. That said, yes, you could probably climb them if you wanted to. Um, Hold on time. You know she's a little bit dangerous. Okay. Um. Let's. I'm going to use my bonus action to again. He kind of whips this cape that he has around and suddenly whoosh, disappears into a burst of fall looking foliage, sort of decaying brown leaves, some of them still red um, and autumn colored, and then try to appear up in the trees here. All right. And he will call down and, and say, um, I was lying, by the way. Chickens suit you. You don't say. <laughs> and as he does that, he uses a legendary action. And oh. his beard all of a sudden just grows and streaks out across the entire space between you and him, striking at you, Smiler, as he Do uses... I cover from the tree? Uh, Is that... It, I don't think it's his turn. I think the bearded devil's... Am I, am I Ooh, the order? You missed. You missed what I said. Legendary action. Legendary action. Oh, sorry. Uh, he uses hungering face, and yes, you do get a little extra cover. I would say from the tree. Why not? Um, and um, let's see. I am hitting AC seventeen. Um, so I'm going to give you a plus two to your AC because of the tree. Misses. Misses. Oh, how disappointing. Uh, his his uh, beard sh grabs a hold of one of the branches and then sh rips it off as it begins to fly through the air and lands about 10 feet closer to him. Oh, that was a razor thin uh, margin. These are the jokes. Oh, shame. <laughs> uh, Stunning <laughs> delivery. Just, uh, looks up at you just... <laughs> and then looks back and turns his attention towards your group. Uh, the bearded devil in front of you, Jexter. He first attacks with his beard, which Say, strikes we... out at you, hitting AC 23. Well, that hits. Uh, doing three points of piercing damage. I'm going to need a constitution saving throw. I was going to say, we look three. at the devil and we will join you against save. Smiler. Pardon? Pardon? What, I, say, I didn't hear what she said. I say, we, we look to the devil and say, we will join you against Smiler. <laughs> oh, 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 that's a twist. Okay. 17. Ooh. You are fine. As the uh, beard streaks out and attaches to various parts of your face, you pull away some blood coming free um, as the damage rips into your face a bit. But uh, as you feel the poison begin to uh, course through you, you pull away before it is able to affect you too terribly. Bad touch, bad touch. <laughs> and now he attacks with his glaive, swinging as it does. It begins to glow with black energy. It hits AC 24. 10 points of slashing, um, and I'm going to need you to make another constitution saving throw. Wow, okay. Jesus. I don't like him. Some eight An constitutions. Eight is a fail. I am not going to use that. I'm going to use my Kraken Dice from now on. All right, so... Uh, you the uh let's see let me double check here doo, 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 doo. right so the glaive slashes into you and um blood pours out of the wound but then there is a almost a um a sucking feeling as the black energy from this uh blade as it, it sort of attaches to your body where the wound is and begins to sort of pull blood out of you causing the wound to be far more 
dangerous than it is on first glance. So I'm going to do this right here. Well, I don't like that at all. Okay, that is his turn. This one comes running up and attacks you, Zelmira, making a beard attack. Uh, is he 22? That hits. 10 points of piercing. Okay. The constitution saving throw. Advantage. Loving, loving. Advantage. Oh, Indeed, at advantage. advantage. That's because of the uh, protection from poison that you've been given. Thank you. You're okay. also resistant to poison. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Three minus one is two. But you've uh, advantage. We have advantage. advantage. Oh, yay. Ah, not so shabby. 16 minus one. 15. You have thrown off the effects of the beard poison. It then attacks you with his glaive. Hitting uh -huh. AC 17. Dang it. Yeah. 12 points of slashing. Good um, grief. And I'm going to need a constitution saving throw for this. Oh, love it, love it, love it. Oh, man. Ah, oh, beans. That gets poison as well. No, it is not. Uh, ten. Ten. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not enough as once, as similar to Jexter, the uh, blade, as it slashes over you, it begins to sort of draw energy out of you as if it's making the wound bleed more than it normally would. And that is going to be that. Oh, no, wait, not that. It's going to be that. All right. That's going to be their turn done, and that's going to bring us up to Zelmira. Is that, an, ac is that an accurate health bar above Zelmira? No, we've long rested. Yeah, I don't uh, think so. Is well, it you, know, you, 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 you 10 points of piercing and then 12 points of slashing. That's 22 yeah. points. Yeah, that's yeah, accurate. Yeah, we're, we're, oof. She's got yeah, a negative oof. con too, doesn't she? Yeah. Yikes. Yeah. You know it. Okay, so um, Zelmira will use her water whip. Water whip. All right. Keep um, in mind, if this is a, I believe, a ranged attack, so it will be a disadvantage uh, because he's right there up in your grill. Well, I'm not trying to get him. I'm trying to oh. get. Well, you still, you still going to be a disadvantage because you have a guy there. It's going to be. Um, it's going to. He, he is causing you to have disadvantage on all ranged attacks. Love it. So. Um, and I can't move without incurring an attack of opportunity. Uh, you could use a key point to uh, step of the wind. Uh, you know what? Let's do that then. Let's... It's not a... The water whip, isn't that what... Didn't we decide it wasn't an attack? It's a ranged we... attack though, right? It's a yeah. ranged spell, something. Yeah, so I can't use like my flurry of blows or... What's the feature after. say? The feature says ranged attack. <clears throat> oh. E. Um, cool. So I will then use a key point to step of the wind away okay. from this. So uh, guy. you. Okay. So I can go correct. Yep. Uh, reading it here, uh, it does not say a ranged attack anywhere in the thing. Um, Ooh. That seems like a oversight to me, but it doesn't say it. So we're going to go with raw. Yay. Okay. You so are uh, you are able to just blast him with water if that's what you want to do. That is what I want to do. Right. Um so I'm actually going to go for the big bad. For the big bad. All right. I think I think so. If you want. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm going to do it. Okay, so he's going to make a dexterity saving throw. That's why it's not. It's a saving throw. A saving throw. All right, he's rolled an eight. Ha-ha! <laughs> Fool. <laughs> so it's a dex of 14. Um, Which and is a fail. Yes. And so just all your save damage. every one time, I'll just roll it on. All righty. Oh, that was 20. terrible. I know. I'm being punished for not using my Kraken dice. So water blasts out of your hands as you channel the energy and the water here rather than being the cool crisp uh penetrating force that you've had in the past it is foul and corrupted down here but it is nevertheless water and it snakes out around the bearded devil in front of you and crosses the space and blasts into garak zed uh doing damage and um let's see he is not prone 
or or pull. You can um, you can either knock him prone or pull him closer, whichever you prefer. I would like to knock him prone. Okay, down he goes. <laughs> oh, it's so his turn now. But now it is his turn. He will stand up using half of his movement. And he will look over at you, Smiler. And he begins to step forward towards you, Zelmira. He stands right in front of you there, and he is going to attack. Ooh, he's a f- he's fast. He is. How fast? I have rolled a 16 to hit with his beard. That just hits. That just oh. hits. Oh, dear. Yeah. Eight points of piercing. I'm down. Okay. And then, let's see. Not to there. Down goes Zelmira. Pure, you say. Excellent. And then he... Let's see. Give me a moment to plot. (laughs) Indeed. Well, this is all going as planned. Yeah. Also, every time... Sorry, go ahead. If you focus the monsters on the character that you know survives... (laughs) <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing can go wrong. Um, this is entirely unrelated, but every time Sean, when he starts to math or like compute, he goes, da 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 da. I think da 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 da. I heard like, that too <laughs> earlier. Uh, yeah. I'm like, that's a different vibe, but yeah. I like it. You do, you do beep boop bop, so there's beep, that. Beep boop bop. That's so. <laughs> He, unconscious form, he reaches down and picks up Zelmira and puts her against the tree and begins to carefully examine her. And that is his second turn. So, second uh, action. And that's going to bring us to Artem. Artem is going to finish the spell that he started casting that instigated all this, and he's going to cast Fairy Fire, and it's only going to get the two of them... But, um, oh, no, can, it'll get can... the three of them. I'm going to get that little imp guy. All right. Got it. Dexterity saving throws? Yes. All righty. Uh, that is a fail on the bearded devil. Good. That is a fail on Garrick Zed. And Good. that is a 12 on the imp, I believe, is also a fail. All fails. All right. So they are all fairy fired. Garrick Zed doesn't appear to really care. Um, and then, uh, with the. Uh, with my bonus action, uh, I am going to Homunky Jade uh, attack uh, Garrick's head with a force strike. That's a 23. That is a hit. Crit fish. Oh, yeah, I might as well. Uh, And that will be seven points of damage. Okay. Uh, But sure, let's give give it a crit fish. Not a crit fish, but, uh, but seven, seven points of damage. Got it. And then Artem will retreat kind of behind the tree here. All right. At the end of your turn, he takes another legendary action and leaps over this bearded devil, landing right next to you, Jexer, and he makes an attack with his glaive. Uh, ooh. I have rolled a natural 20. So that is... 12 points of slashing. I need a constitution saving throw. Whew. You have saved I, I rolled a 13. I was going to... I meant to roll with my Kraken. All Go right. Ahead. 13. So because he has rolled a natural 20, as he lands, you see he has indeed hands clasped all over his body. 
Um, they are form belts, bandoliers going over his shoulders and around his waist. Uh, large hands, small hands, feminine hands, uh, masculine hands, some with fur, uh, some with uh, multiple fingers, uh, more than, <laughs> more, than uh, more than four, some with less than, more than five. <coughs> <laughs> that might explain why I'm so bad at math. Uh, some with more than five, some with less How than five. How many fingies? How mm-hmm. many fingies? I need you to roll a D100. Jexter, as he brings the glaive towards your hand with this natural Uh-oh. 20. Kraken dice, what are you going to roll? That doesn't count. <laughs> Ooh, uh, for those who know, 9-3. Nine, 9-3, three. Nine, three. 93. Yes, 93. 93. All right, so as he lands, the glaive comes in, cuts into your arm, completely severing your right hand is removed from your body and falls onto the ground of Avernus, immediately cauterizing. You are- He's not even my daddy. And that's going to bring us to uh, the imp. Imp who... Wait, uh, wait. My hand is off? Your hand is off, Jexter. Gloves are off. You rolled a natural 20, and you rolled very badly on your percentile. I would say that I rolled really excellently, but... Uh, well, in my game, is the high, if you roll high, it's bad on the percentiles. Uh, so... That will bring us to the imp. The imp goes after uh, Hamunku Jade. Where is he currently? Where is Hamunku Jade is on my turn. Uh, where, no, where, where, is, where is he existing in the space? Oh, Hamunku Jade uh, is near me. So okay. probably like here. So the imp flies over towards Hamunku Jade, stopping there and attacks him. I have rolled a seven, I believe. That would be a miss. That will be a miss. All right, that will bring us to Bolitus Spore. Uh, I will instantly look at Zelmera and fire a blast of white light from his staff, hitting her square in the chest. Hacking her. Healing word. Bolitas has betrayed us. Oh, healing word. <laughs> Sweet Bolitas. And then I will charge this one in front of me. Sweet Bolitas. So, Mary, you've been uh, you've you've been healed for twelve points. Twelve Yay. points. And I will smack at the guy in front of me with advantage. Roll yes, Eleven and a fourteen. So the fourteen will. The fourteen be... does hit. Okay, and I'm just gonna roll it in thingy because it's just easier. Uh, 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 where are you? Where are you? Come on, hit. Oh, that's rolled into hit. Hang on. Sorry, I don't know what DD Beyond's doing. Uh, I'm just gonna roll it in. D8, right? Hit. Yeah, I'm just gonna do that. So it's nine. Oh, nice. Thunder damage of eight. Wow. So 17 at the moment. And then I do my reaction on him. Uh, he needs to make a con save DC 14. All right. So what has he taken so far? He has taken 17 damage. 17 Did damage. You... And that was a shillelagh is a magic weapon and thunder damage is magic. I couldn't have done Not... shillelagh, actually, because I oh. done healing word. But I would have thought I would so... have made that up beforehand, but I didn't say it, so... So eight that of it means is damage. Would... Eight of it is cold, eight. uh magical damage. All right, so he gets the fort back. Got Sorry. it. Sorry, uh, no problem, no problem at all. I should have got Easy him with Shalady first. All right, things going on in the background. Let me make sure I get his hit points right. Um, all right, so he took, mm-hmm. and he needs a con. Con save, please. Con save. I have ruled. Is this magic? It is magic, necrotic. I've rolled a 12. He takes an additional, come on, roll high. Two necrotic. Two <laughs> necrotic damage. All right. As the spores emit from your body, coating him, <laughs> brushes them off, 
Looks like he is moving to attack you next. Do it. Boletus. And that's going to bring us to Jexter. Jexter, uh, you are, are able to throw off the shock of missing a hand long enough to do your action and attack. Okay. You can't tell, but I'm flipping him off. <laughs> <laughs> he can tell. Um, I look up at Smiler. Remembering the plan. Look at my own not arm. First, I look at the big bad, whatever his name is. Garak Zed. Took, took, I'm not going to try to say that, but he took my hand. Um, Darth. And... Ooh, that's a nice I, one, he says, looking down at the hand. I, I uh... Sort of oh, touches it with his foot. That's rude. Just rude. Um, Why with his foot? As a bonus action, I will be using uh, unsettling words. Mm, all right. Which will uh, impose a bardic inspiration die against him. Okay. Uh, uh, his next saving throw. His next saving throw. Got it. His next saving throw. And then I am going to step forward to attempt to touch him. That I'm repeating what I did to Smiler the Defiler. When we first met, I'm going to use unsettling words. And I say to him, Smiler knows how to kill you. Okay. For the unsettling words. And then I will reach out to attempt to touch him uh, with the bestow curse. Okay. So he's magic resistant. Uh, wisdom save, you say? Yes. DC so 15. my total is uh, 18. He has advantage. But now you do the cutting words, right? Well, not the cutting That's words. That's when those, the unsettling words. Unsettling words. So uh, roll your D8. And that will be eight. Oh, 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 my goodness. And it succeeds. In that and case, uh, as the result of my bestow curse, in terror. I get to choose one ability score. While cursed, this target has disadvantage on ability checks and saving throws made with that ability score. And I'm choosing wisdom. Wisdom. Got it. So uh, while cursed... This is concentration mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. up to one minute. Okay. And then I'm done. Yeah. So he's got dis. So he's people have advantage to hit him. He has disadvantage on ability checks for wisdom Hold and on. saving throws. I wisdom. will paste it in. Boink boink. Wow. I'll try That's to. That's clutch. That is huge. So he has disadvantage, <sighs> and I choose wisdom. <sighs> You'll pay for that. So that's going to bring us back to the top of the order with Smiler the Defiler. Smiler, better not betray us now. I'm staring right at him. Oh, well, this is not encouraging at all. But that, I see an opening. I am going to cast um, upon him. I'm going to uh, start humming that little melody I had before, kind of a jaunty, discordant little thing and um, try to infect his brain with it and cast Otto's Irresistible Dance. The great thing about that spell is there's no saving throw as it is irresistible. And he begins to dance, just <laughs> and hops up and down, sort of doing a little jig, his uh, glaive moving up in the air as he does a little prance up and down sort of ah, looks like he's trying desperately to stop but is unable to do so I have rolled a four I will recharge my face step and swoop, uh, disappear in a puff of leaves and reappear and then attack him all right so that is all so he is let's see he has disadvantage he cannot move he cannot leave his space has disadvantage on dexterity saving throws and attack rolls while the target is affected by this spell, all other creatures have advantage on attack rolls against it, as it already did because of uh, Fairy Fire. As an action, the dancing creature makes a wizard 7 to regain control of itself. 
All righty. Okay. So on on his turn. On his turn, indeed. Smiler, are you finished? I'm making an attack as well. Oh well, very well. Ooh, at advantage. Yep. Uh, How are you able to attack and cast a spell? Well, because you assigned me an NPC that has that feature. Oh, the multi attack. <laughs> right. <laughs> My multi attack states. He makes two weapon attacks. He can cast a spell in place of one of these attacks. That's right. I forgot about that. Indeed. Indeed. Um, I've rolled a four for another 10 points of magical piercing damage. Got it. Look what you did. You've got a friend in Smiler. All right. You got Um, a friend. (laughs) Okay. Uh, Five, two, three. So as uh, as his as your turn is finished, um, oh, never mind. It's not gone. He does not has not gotten his legendary actions back yet. All right, so that's going to bring us to Bear Devil number one. Turns to fight you, Smiler. Beard comes out hitting AC twenty two. That hits! Eight points of piercing, and I need a constitution saving throw. While you're doing that, I'm gonna roll his glaive, hitting AC 20. Yeah, that hits as well. Um, either are any of these magical effects? Um, the first one is a poison effect. The second one would be magic. Okay. Um, I've got a 12 on the first con save. That is a success. The second one, magic, I'm naturally resistant to. I roll my kraken dice for some 16. 16. Uh, those are both um, successes. So the second attack did hit you. You took 11 points of slashing damage. Both attacks hit, yeah. Yes. So what was, this, what was the first damage again? The first one was Please. 8 piercing, and the second one was 11 slashing. As the beard just rips bits of your flesh off, um, and then the, the glaive comes down, slashing a small portion of your arm away. Ah, like he's trying to emulate his boss, but just doesn't quite have the knack for it yet. Um, the other bearded devil attacks um, uh, Bolitus. Beard coming at you, hitting AC 9. That I believe that's going to be a miss. To the, miss. Uh, the second one is AC 15, also a miss, I believe. To the miss. Both of those manage to be deflected by your incredibly high AC, Mr. Tortle. Yeah. And that is the end of the Bearded Devils. That's going to bring us to Zelmira. Zelmira, you would normally have to take damage from the infernal wound that you suffered last round. However, the healing that Belitus did seems to have cured it. Sweet um, Belitus! Sweet so Belitus! You are no longer, uh, you're no longer suffering from that. Great. Um... So what I am going to do is I'm going to use my short sword to attack the bearded devil right in front of me. All right. As my first action. You got advantage, um, Zelmira. Mira. You have advantage. Me. And uh, I, I I will not say any more about it after this. But generally speaking, you're going to be better off doing unarmed strikes as a monk than using your short sword. Oh, so I have a question about that, and mm-hmm. I wondered because is it just like a monkey thing? It is a monkey or... thing. Okay, <laughs> so because it's like the same damage dice. For... But your yeah. but your but your um, your um, unarmed strikes are considered magical because Ooh. of monk stuff. And if monk you make stuff. if you make unarmed strikes, then you can use your bonus action to make another unarmed strike. You can even use a key point to do flurry of blows. Well, nifty thrifty. Indeed. Can I do that instead of the short? Yes, you can. <laughs> I highly you. recommend it. No problem. Okie doke. In fact, I insist. In fact, I insist. <laughs> Save your friends. Oh my god. Okay, so. so advantage. How many times? Yes. Okay, perfect. So you you get to make two attacks because of your multi attack. Yes. yes so yes. do uh, t- attack once. Okie dokie. At advantage. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. The first one hits. Um, we're going to say that the 15, we go with the 15, so that did four points of bludgeoning. Um, and the second one would also hit. Go ahead and roll again to see if you uh, get a natural 20 on that. 
Okie doke. And do I roll the attack or just a 20? Uh, or does it matter? One. Doesn't matter. Okay. okay, great, cool. All right, so we're going to keep that 23. So you took six, did six points of bludgeoning on that one. Okay. Um, so now you have your bonus action. You can attack, or you can use a key point to do flurry of blows, which give you two more attacks. I'm going to do flurry of blows. All right, key point spent. Two more attacks. E. Okay, so now go to my flurry of blows. Beep, boop, bop. And boop. <laughs> Beep, boop, bop. Flurry blows. 23 is a hit, but go ahead and roll again to see if you roll a crit. All right, so we're going to keep that 23 for six <laughs> okay. points of bludgeoning. And the second one. Oh, wait, do I go again? <gasps> yeah. Flurry blows. Oh, my God. <laughs> so 60. that's why a monk is always better off using their uh, unarmed strike, because you just uh, did four attacks, all four hit. <laughs> And uh, you did another eight <laughs> points of damage as you just <laughs> rise channeling <up>. Sekhmet. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it's like when a kitty gets up on its hind legs, it's like, bah, 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 bah. Exactly. <laughs> so you you had fallen briefly unconscious. Belita's healing word strikes you. You rise from the ground and just, <laughs> and this bearded devil has no idea what hit him as he just tried to hit Belitus and just gets blindsided as each of your blows hit him right in the temple and his eye begins to sort of swell closed. That's okay. going to be the end of its your, of your turn. Garrick Zed's turn is now. I hope he doesn't attack me because I'm not as handsome as I was a round ago. <laughs> he turns to attack Smiler. Oh, no. Dances. He is he dead to place. He uses his action to try and throw off the effects of Otto's irresistible dance. And that is the wisdom at, at disadvantage. But he has advantage because of magic resistance, so it's a straight roll. I have a 15. That is the DC, oh, I think. Yep. All right, so... DC of the Otto's? Of the Otto's. Yeah. So, Otto's irresistible Speaking dance... Otto. Fades. Was that However, that that minus uh, that minus to his saving throws the one time shot? Was that only once? From the no, he still has it. As long as Jexter is concentrating on it, he is cursed. No, no, that's that's no. the disadvantage. He was talking about unsettling words. The that unsettling words a, is a little oh, shot. shot. Right, okay, shot. I didn't know. I did, okay, cool. But that is his turn. He can do nothing else other than to just sort of stand in with an act of sheer will. He plants his feet into the ground and brings his um, glaive down. Just. <laughs> wrenches himself out of the magical compelled dance. That is his turn. Artem, your turn. Artem is shaking as he brings his mechanical hand to his eyepiece and he says, please work, please work. And he casts a new spell. He's casting Ray of Frost. Oh. Who are you and casting it upon? I'm casting it on the big baddie. Alrighty. And that's a Ooh. dirty 20. That is a hit. Um... That is 11, but I should also get uh, my um, my spell bonus. I don't know why it's not coming up. My alchemical savant, so that should be 15. 15, uh, now did points. we determine that that does more damage of the type that you just did? No, it yeah. is its own type of, oh, is it? Peter, yeah, I it's like it's, Hunter's Mark. I yeah. think it, it just adds, it just to, adds to, to the, the damage. damage you just did, right? To, yeah. So that's a total of 15? 15. <laughs> takes it and he looks at you <laughs> wipes it off does appear to have damaged him but not as much as you were hoping and uh then uh homunky jade will make her own force strike against the uh i think do it against the um imp that is, is this a ranged attack it is a ranged spell attack so it is a disadvantage but with advantage because of fairy fire so that's so going to be a straight, straight roll, roll. I'm afraid that a 10 that is... does not succeed. All right. That's the end of my turn. All right. Now the imp will go. The imp will once again try to attack a monkey jade. Ooh, hitting AC 13. That is the meat to beat. So a monkey jade takes four points of piercing damage. Okay. Um, and I assume it is immune to poison. Yes. 14 points of poison damage, which is wasted. Boletus, it is your turn. Boy. Um, okay. 
Oh, bonus action shillelagh as the uh, uh, his staff just turns again, turns blue with crystal rocks around it. And he will whack towards the one that is in front of Zelmira. Alrighty. With an advantage. That's advantage. I rolled a natural one and a 16 on the dice. That's a 22. Alright, that's a hit. Okay, I will use my reaction again to to do obviously his singing bajig. Loose Ujimi flip. Okay. DC 14 con save. Alright. Uh, actually, I'll see if I need it first. So, you've got... It's all magical. So, it's a five and a four. Uh, plus three. Twelve. Twelve damage. Is he still up? He still <clears throat> appears to be up. Okay. Um, and reaction for his spores. Okay. And that's a con save. Yes, sir. Uh, advantage. I have rolled a twenty. The fouls. All right. Uh, after your turn, please. I assume you are done. Um, I will look to Jackster and see how damaged he is. <clears throat> and I will turn around, and I can't do nothing. All righty. Because I don't. Have Garrick to Zed uses. Garrick Zed uh, uses his um, legendary action as he just leaps away from you, Smiler, flipping in the air and landing next to Artem. Is that a opportunities? This particular action he does does not garner attacks of opportunity. Ooh. As he strikes at you, Artem, with his glaive. Hitting AC 24. It's a hit. 13 points of slashing damage. I'm going to need a constitution saving throw. Come on, big monies. Eight. Ooh. Eight. Uh, you feel uh, the wound on your body beginning to um, uh, pulse as the black energy from this weapon draws life force out of you. I mean, you feel that this wound is going to continue uh, to, um, to cause you pain and damage. And that is going to be the end of his legendary action. That's going to bring us to Jexter. I need a con save for my uh, oh, yes. fire. Yes, you do. Oh, 11. Good. You have succeeded. Whew. Did someone else fail that saving throw? Uh, Zelmira did, but when she took um, when she took the healing from Belitis, it, uh, it ended it. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Uh, so that's going to bring us, bring us to Jexter. Jexter, you stand there, your arm shortened quite a bit on the right side, your hand lying limp and lifeless in the ground before, before you. You have a, a bearded devil right in front of you, bearing down on you as uh, Garrick said, has just absolutely leapt completely out of your grasp. Okay, so free action, pick up and grab my hand and stick it back. And you said it was cauterized and quickly cast uh, healing word. <laughs> At third level, does it Indeed. reattach? Healing word. Uh, you take, you, you are able to get your hit points back, but as you release your hand, it flops to the ground. I turn to Artie and... Look, Artie. We can be a matching pair now. Oh, oh twins. <laughs> and then I am going to look at the creature that just hit him and using a cantrip with a leveled spell going to cast vicious mockery saying Alrighty. very bad words at Garrick's set. <laughs> I believe this is a, I need wisdom, a, a wisdom save. I need a DC 15 wisdom save, but at disadvantage. Disadvantage, but at advantage because of magic resistance or so straight roll, it is a two. I rolled Four double points two. of so. psychic damage. Two points of psychic damage. The deuce. Four. Four. Four points. Four. Four points of psychic damage. Double deuce. Got it. And... <laughs> Then I'm going to, uh, using what little bit I have left, I'm going to sidestep to right there, and I am done. Alrighty. That is going to bring us to... <laughs> the Fairy Dragons. Baru. Who, as promised...
attack when Artem has been attacked. So, uh, I'm going to have them. I'm going to put them on the board. They are still invisible, but that is where they are. And they both attack. So, a, both of them, you see the sparkly air just come out in front of you, both of them just uh, converging on this point right in front of Garrick Zed. Um, and he needs to make this at uh, disadvantage. Uh, let's see. However, he succeeded. Um, what is your passive perception, Smiler? Ten. Ten. All right. Nah, you don't notice anything untoward. Uh, that's going to bring us to Smiler to the Filer at the top of the round. Do I see the the dragons? You do not. They are invisible. They 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 breathe their weapon. They do not regain. They do not turn visible when they breathe. Gotcha. Um, then right there, um, I will um, summon a little tornado of um, leaves and foliage um, that kind of just spin. They be, they sort of spin in that tornado-ish helical pattern and then start to just move every which way um, chaotically and try to um, confuse the enemies there. I cast confusion Very good. in that um, spot. Do me a favor. A concentration uh, spell? Well, the other one he saved up, so it's... Um, yeah, so concentration is... Um, uh, yeah. uh, Artem, can you roll me a d2, please? d2? I'm going to use my Kraken dice and yes. so determine your... Uh... The one, if you roll a one, um, he, he hits um, J Monkey Jade. If you roll the Kraken, he does not. Uh, he rolled one. All right, so come, uh, I need a saving throw from Monkey Jade for this as well. Oh, jeez. All right. Always getting to how Monkey Jade is in a very weird there spot. There have been a way I could place it to not hit it. I just can't see the icon on the battle map. Well, the, he's not on. He's not on the battle map. Um, that's why I had him roll a D two. Um, it's up would to not, you. If... You would not have been able to get both the imp and Garrick's head. I'm saying that the um, okay that the uh, the, that the uh, Jared is there. So okay, what is the a little obscured? What is hmm? the um, what is the saving throw? Wisdom. You are fine. Well, very nice. The imp has failed with a four. And Garrick Zed has rolled a natural 20. All right. So the imp is confused. All righty. And on his turn, he will have to do confusing things. Uh, I have a 14 to hit the bearded devil right next to me then. Very well. Uh, that is going to be a hit. All right, 10 points of damage. 10 points of slashing damage. Or piercing damage. Short sword is piercing damage. All right. Turn to Jexter and say, told you it was going to be a tough fight. All hands on deck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Smiler. Uh, at the end of your turn... Um, Garrick said uses his other legendary action. Um, and his coward snakes out, striking at 5, 10, 15, 20, 5, 30, at uh, coward Boletus. Uh oh. No, no, Boletus! <laughs> he can't quite. Well, let me think. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He can hit you, Smiler. He is going to strike at you, Smiler. Uh, he has just enough reach on that. For You're here for me, not my servants. Hungering face, uh, hitting AC eight. That's going to be a miss. Bearded Devils go. Bearded Devil attacks Smiler with his beard, hitting AC 15. AC 15. Smiler. Smiler. Oh, sorry. Um, uh, what, what, uh, 50, I have AC 18. So. All right. So then his glaive comes out and hitting AC 19. Six points of slashing damage. Uh, roll a constitution save for the poison or and a constitution save for your spell. P P Peter's all like, what you going to do, Smiler? Oh, that's me. <laughs> oh, that. I thought you were laughing at Mythweaver's <laughs> uh, comment in chat. Jexter. About your eyes bugging out? <laughs> Just miss Jexter by a nub. 
What are your What are your roles there? What are your roles, Smiler? Um, I have uh, wait, two con saves. I'm confused. All right, um, I've got a uh, seventeen and that succeeds against the poisons, and an eight. Yes. Uh, your confusion spell drops. All right. Didn't last very long. Nope. And that is going to be the end of that Bearded Devil's turn. This other Bearded Devil blah, 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 attacks you, Belitus, with his yes. beard. Hitting AC 19. Missed. All right. And then he attacks uh, Zelmir with his uh, glaive. Coward. 17. That is. 11 points of slashing damage. Ah, beans. And I'm go- at one point. Ooh, spicy. Ah. And then I'm going to need a constitution saving throw from you, Zemira. Ah, Natch. Of course. La, 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 crack and dice. Ah, beans. Hold on. Wait. Yes. No. Five. Five. <laughs> <laughs> definitely was, not a 50. This is <laughs> awful. That was a journey. Uh, wow. I was like, is it a six? Is it a nine? Is I am glad we were all here for that. The dice tell a story. <laughs> what was so, story? Once again, the glaive comes slicing through and the necrotic energy attached to it begins to seep energy out as the blood pours onto the parched earth of Avernus. Zelmira, at the start of your turn, you take five points of damage and you are unconscious. Dying unconscious and prone. Nap time. And that's going to bring us to Garrick Zed. Garrick Zed, who attacks Artem. His beard snakes this out. This is not good, guys. Uh, hitting AC 14. That's a miss. All right. And the glaive comes slicing at AC 17. Also a miss. No kidding. No, I'm not kidding. All right. Artificer, man. Got All that right. shield, that Fair armor. enough. Two misses. All right, that's going to bring us to your turn, Artem. Um, okay, so ranged spell attack cantrips at, at, at close range are not a disadvantage, correct? Why would spell they be attacks? a disadvantage? Is it, it, it is a disadvantage? If, if it says like range, range that, yeah, then it is. Okay. Um, but he's still fairy fired. He is still fairy fired. I'm trying to... It's a creature within range. So, yeah, it's a it's sort of... Does that it means it's a ranged attack? Okay, all right. Um, then I will uh, I will shoot at the big bad. Alrighty. Come on, big money. Oh, oh, that's a crit. Oh, big money indeed. the natural twenty. Oh. How much damage did so you? So that will be eighteen plus my four is twenty-two. Oh man, he did not like that. Although it, again, it did not seem to do as much damage as it what? blows on him. He's, no, I waited too long, and he is still up and attacking. All right, um, uh, and then Hamunky Jade will do her uh, do her four strike. Remind me where she is, Sean. I don't know where. Uh... We're going to say that she's right there. I really should have made a, a token for that. I, I gave am... you a picture. You did. I'm a bad person. I still love you. Um, all right. Uh, she will uh, She will also uh, She will also big bad. And okay. Sorry for the delay you die of. Ooh. Oh, uh, that was a so crit. <laughs> Two crits. Right yeah. in the gamut there. <laughs> yeah. Very good. All right. That's going to bring us to the imp who uh, once again attacks um, a monkey jade. Mm-hmm. Hitting AC. Ooh, now, I, now it's my turn to have the natural 20 as what? I have done. It's not possible. Nine points of piercing damage to Hamunky Jade. Hamunky Jade's uh, metal armor begins to crumble, and she falls to the ground, leaving only the uh, the glowing green gemstone uh, encased in Already. metal. Bolitas, it is your turn. You look over at Zelmira, and you see that this wound on her is still pulsating. It is still drawing life force from her, and on her turn. She will be very close to death if you don't do something. Please, uh, the cleric. He uh, casts 
healing word at first level just to heal her. Alrighty. And five healing for her. Um, and that closes the wound. It ends up, it uh, undoes the um, the necrotic damage that is ongoing from this and blow. I will booming blade shillelagh attack the one that's right in front of her. So is Alrighty. it still fairy fired? It is still fairy fired. As uh, Garrick Zed missed both of his attacks. Shouldn't the uh, Humunky Jade add advantage? Whew. Uh, I rolled a 14, so that's 20 to hit. Uh, 14 is a hit. Uh, 20 to hit, indeed. 20 to hit. So it's, a Monkey it's... Jade did a ranged attack, which oh, would have been a disadvantage. Oh, yeah, 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 oh, yeah, 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 I rolled a 7 and an 8, so that's 15 plus 3, that's 18 damage. So this bearded devil, after it's just seen Zelmira go down again, you cast Healing Word with one hand and bring your uh, staff up around and crack him across the face, and he falls dead at your feet. And then I will run to here, and I need a con save from Mr. Just call him Fuckface. <laughs> we never remember his name. Uh, I have rolled an eight. His name is Gary Zed. An He's eighteen Gary. on this. Yep, he passed this. Right, this is that was magic, right? Yes. Okay, that's going to bring us to Jexter. Is it class? It's a, it's a class feature, so. But yeah, it's, take a... it's necrotic, so yeah. Just, it would uh... be... Sorry. It's your turn, Jexter. I was making sure the jade was all done. Then in that case, I'm just going to take a step to the right. Put your hands on hips. And bend your knees in time. Thank you, thank you, thank you for playing along. Thank you. Wait, was it the cha-cha slide or... Uh, or was it the time, time warp? warp? <laughs> that was time they warp. They both match. Both. Avi. <laughs> and I'm going to do a little tandem for flavor. <clears throat> I'm mm -hmm. going to do a little tandem. And I'm going to simply say at the same time as I'm going to use my bonus action to activate my dancing rapier, launch it at Garrick Zed and attack it at the same time, saying my special word and an even more special word, vicious mockery. Got it. Sashay, bitch. <laughs> there is your dancing rapier that leaps from your belt as you say the control word. And it swoops right by him with the seven to hit. <laughs> Avantage it has advantage because of oh, fairy fire. Oh, neat. We have it. That again. With a 24 to hit. That is a hit. Can I take the damage from the first roll? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Nine points of magic piercing damage. Nice. And then vicious mockery kicks in. I need a DC 15 at disadvantage because he's still cursed. Gotcha. He has uh, or I resistance. Guess at, at, at neutral because neutral. I've rolled a 17. Oh, no, then nothing. Then nothing. But he certainly knows I'm there. Got it. Um, are you done, Chexter? Yes. All right. Both of the fairy dragons uh, roll to see if they get their thing back. Let me see here. I'm going to just roll it here. Uh, one of them does. One of them blows at Garrick Zed. Um, and... And he saves. All right. That brings us to Smiler. Last. Unimpressive, Garrick Zed. Much less handy than I always heard. And, uh, <laughs> we'll uh, repeat that same spell. All righty. Confusion. 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 All right. First, we'll do the, uh, Imp. We're really working hand in hand this time, Jeff. Imp has failed again. And it is confused. Sort of begins to... And Garrick said... Disadvantage, rolls. he's bestow cursed. Straight roll. 16. Saves. Saves. Alrighty. Anything else, Smiler? Yes, attacking attack. the imp next to me with a... Uh, uh, 26 bearded hit. Devils. That's a hit. For... Uh, nine points of magical piercing. Nine points of magical piercing. He is... 
breathing heavily. Uh, many of the parts of his beard have been knocked off and are lying next to Jexter's hand. Uh, his uh, glaive is uh, limp in his hand. He <sighs> summons one last bout of strength and brings an attack to bear upon you, Smiler, as Running he... is an option. Never! <laughs> Uh, his beard comes sneaking out, hitting AC 8, <laughs> and his glaive, it's AC 21. Yeah. For nine points of slashing damage, um, I'm going to need two constitution saving throws. This one, the first one's versus magic, right? The first one is versus magic, indeed. All right. Good thing I've got a 14, and then the con saves a 14, uh, 17. All right, so uh, confusion stays up. Um, that is the bearded devil done. Zelmira, um... You have five hit points, and as you have been healed, you are no longer suffering from the necrotic damage of the wound. Thanks, Belidus. Um, so I am going to be boop up. I'm going to use my otter whip, let's see, to go for fuckface. Go for fuckface. Yeah. We are go for fuckface. <laughs> go for fuckface. All right, fuckface so th finger bang. There's a there is a oh, no. large tree. There's a large tree in front of you, Zelmira. I'm gonna need you to to move if you want to get line of sight on. Her. I would certainly really love to do that. <laughs> so thank you for the gentle reminder. Not a problem. Okay. I reach out with my hand to bring you closer. My left reach hand. Thank out, you. Out, fuckface. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, I have to go. <laughs> Wait, is this okay? Just like here. Uh, I would I would move this way. Okie doke. Beep boop bop. Ah. Okay. All right. So now you've got line of sight. Blast him. Yeah. All right. There's one. I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> Blaster. Uh, here's my dexterity serving throw with a twenty. I have saved. So okay. roll your damage, and I will take half of it. Damage. Oh, whoa! All right, that blow rips away the outside of his um, body, which seems to be very heavily armored with just natural armor. Just pieces of it begin to fall off, and he's like, "Ah, no, no, you can't!" Anything else, Zomira? Um, no. Okay. Uh, All right, it is his turn. You were so close to your horns, idiot. <laughs> All right, he hits you with his beard, um, uh, Artem, for a mm -hmm. 25 to hit. That will do it. Eight points of piercing. Okay. Constitution saving throw. Sure. You have failed. Uh, you take Oof. that damage. You are poisoned for the next minute. Okay. Um, you can repeat the saving throw at the end of each of your turns. You cannot be healed while you are poisoned I, in this way. I totally forgot this Gary Zed dude was a bearded devil the whole time. Now he goes and... Oh, he's been making... He's just been missing them. And then he kept on you. doing that. And he rolls a natural one with his glaive. And it looks like it took absolutely everything he had to make that last attack. Artem, it is your turn. Uh, the second con save, Fairy Fire, is still up. Got it. Um, so, uh, just out of curiosity, I'm poisoned, so it's disadvantage. He's Fairy Fired, so it's advantage cancels out straight roll. Correct. Okay, there's no double disadvantages. Double. No, double. Nope. All right. And he's going to Ray of Frost, and he's going to um, specifically show his... Uh, He's going to specifically show his mechanical hand at him as he casts it for a 14. 14 misses. Yeah. Flanked? Uh, um, I don't think I have anything that I can right. bonus action with. What's that? All the single demons. All the single demons. <laughs> um, I don't think I have any effective bonus actions aside from... Uh, what? I'm gonna, uh -oh. I'm gonna uh -oh. healing word uh -oh. on, uh, I'm gonna cast, uh, I'm gonna uh -oh. cast healing word on Zelmira. 
All right. Can we make a shanty out of that? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. All the secret demons. All right, uh, Artem. If you liked points. it, then you put and made a pact with it. If you like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on. People are losing hands. <laughs> um, I, tell me what, I, uh, what, I, what I'm doing. Um, You're not doing anything. I gave 10 points of healing to Zelda. No, uh, um, the imp, it is the imp's turn. Um, oh, Smiler, I have rolled a 10. What am I doing? For confusion. Peter's still got to get used to being called Oh, Smiler. 10. You um, act normally, you lame, lame you creature. act normally. All right. The imp flies around and attacks you, Artem. Hitting AC 20. It's a hit. 15 points of piercing damage. Make 15 a... from the sorry, imp? Sorry, sorry. Five points of piercing damage. Sweet believers. <laughs> make, Sweet believers. A, make a constitution saving throw. You guys are terrible. Stop, stop mathing. Bad. 12. 12. You have succeeded. You take no poison damage. Do I still have to con for the, uh, you do. the fairy fire? <laughs> oh, and no. Oh, there it goes. Oh, no. There goes fairy fire. Who's up for a little while? Belitus. It's your turn. Sweet. Um. Well, that just ruined everything. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna have to whack him. You got this. I need to heal you, but I can't. Cause you can't be healed. Um, I'm just gonna hit him. Um, do I get a plus because I'm flanking? You get a plus one. Mm -hmm. Very good. I rolled a seventeen. So that's that's 20, gonna be a hit. Um. Damage. That's five, six, seven, eight. Only eight damage. Only eight damage, but it's yeah, magic damage. It's magical, right? yeah. He's looking very, very hurt. One of his horns is broken off. He's limping, <laughs> making a supreme effort to prove to whatever patron has seen something in him that he is worthy to ascend. Anything else, Belitus? You should hit me. I make a lovely soup. And that's it. Dexter. That was a horrible thing to say, please. <laughs> trying to make him not hit Artem. I'm the one that does vicious mockery, man. Come on. <laughs> make a lovely soup. He comes pre-seasoned. <laughs> He's salty. Oh. Oh, so salty. Hope you um, like Gorgonzola. Ooh, I do oh. like a bit of Gorgonzola. What is happening right now? Next oh, yes. <laughs> What's she doing, trying... buddy? Just trying to imagine a, a gorgonzola soup. <laughs> Jexter, it's your turn, buddy. Please don't take it away from me. Uh, okay, so, um, you said uh, that he's not looking so good there, yeah? He's looking very hurt. I'm going to do the same thing with the... Uh, Look at me again, and, and uh, I, you can't tell, but I phantom snapped my fingers. I said, Sashay, bitch. I'm going to do it again. All right. So this uh, is a straight attack roll, right? 15 on his wisdom save, but yes, a straight attack roll. Uh, that's at the end of his turn, yeah? Will you... Okay, so make your attack. Okay. Oh, oh, uh, yeah, I got you. 22 to hit for the Dancing Rapier. Nine points of magic damage. The final blow is yours, yes. Jexter. Payment for your hand. Can I get a refund? <laughs> I didn't realize he was that close. I might have tried the uh, spores on him. But you didn't. That's okay. This is poetic justice. Um, I was saving it for shield. Uh, to, I, to, the, to the DM's description. DM's description. All right. So as he has attacked Artem, seems to be focused on this much weaker looking target. Um, he turns just as the disembodied rapier pierces him right through the temple. He's 
stands there quivering for a moment before the rapier comes out, does a flourish, and begins to move back towards you, Jexter, as Garrick Zed falls dead. Now, with, with the DM's permission, since he fell dead as I did vicious mockery, can I do that at the bearded devil right behind me? Yes. With a, a swish turn and a blue steel? Mm-hmm. Uh, so he'll need to make a... a DC 15. Two. He has advantage. He's rolled a natural 20. Oh, well. That's right. The fairy dragons begin to attack the imp as the imp turns invisible on its turn, but in the meantime, it's being um, accosted by two invisible things that no one can see. And uh, is there's a very bizarre row happening right next to you, Artem. Uh, <laughs> Smiler. Have I noticed the fairy dragons at this point? You've been pretty busy. And your passive perception is not very good. Um, I will allow you to roll a uh, d20 to see. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, I rolled a 17 on Monsieur Quack and Die. 17. Um, you have no idea what exactly it is, but there is, there are allies apparently that you are unaware of involved in this battle. You're not exactly sure of their nature. Um, let's see. Let, uh, let's make, uh, just a pair of attacks then against this guy. Let's try and finish this off. Um, no, that's less fun. I am going to use first on him. Um, um, I told you, you could run. I even I was going to have, and he looks down at the hand to have, a offer to have Jexter point the way, but you chose poorly. I'll cast a hideous laughter on him. Okay. Uh, what am I rolling? Is that wisdom again? Wisdom. All right. With advantage, I have rolled an 18. No fun at all. Bearded and devil. I will roll a... Well, go ahead. Uh, a 13 for my attack. 13 is the AC. Wow. Okay. Uh, max damage, 12. And it is dead. As uh, the confusion on the imp continues and as it is being attacked, it sort of uh, turns invisible on its turn and there is an invisible fight happening that you can hear that sort of just recedes a little bit into the distance. Um, nobody is able to see what is happening. But that is the end of combat as the imp is no longer a threat. And we are going to deal with what comes next. So, you all stand there, panting, some of you more wounded than others. Eventually, Artem, the poison in you fades. Artem and... will immediately go over to Jexter and take a look at the, uh, take a look at his hand. And, well, it's uh... on the ground. <laughs> well, at his, at his nub, he'll take a look at his nub and he will detach his own arm um, at the wrist uh, and he will put it on yours and he will look at you and say it works through your mind spend a few minutes getting used to it I'm gonna make you one thank you thank you Autumn I I thought about asking for your hand once, but I didn't mean like this. <laughs> and Artem turns a shade of purple. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yeah. yeah. Look, you come here, come here. You, you, Sally, come here. I'm going to bust out healing word on both of them. 10 on Artem, nine on Zell. Thanks. Thanks, Jax. I'm fine, thanks. How bad is was... everyone? <laughs> Did you even get hit, Smile? Ah! Uh, he kind of looks down. There's some. His armor's actually completely undented and uh, um, completely undamaged, actually. Very shiny and nice looking. So he's fine. 
Well, I'd give you a hand too, but then I wouldn't have many. Artem, what is... It works with my mind. I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Um, oh. I'll finger it out. Yes, indeed. Oh, um, oh what, no. Let's, let's just go. Smiler goes and starts to rummage through um, Garrick Ed's things. Uh, yeah. You find... Does um, you find he has... He possesses a very impressive looking... Uh, great axe on the end of a polearm, a very deadly and oversized glaive. Um, also, uh, 15 soul coins. Wow. Um, I will try to extract... Um, I'm going to try to extract some poison from his beard. All right, make a... Um, it's an a, alchemy uh, tools? Alchemy tools check. All right. I'm going to use my crack and die. Oh, God, you. That is a 22. You are able to extract some poison. I will put it in my, put it in one of my empty vials. DC 12, um, if they uh, do not succeed, they are poisoned for a minute. Um, they cannot take healing, cannot be healed while they are poisoned this way and they can make a saving throw at the end, at the end of each of their turns. Is there anything else on his person, Sean? The only other thing of interest is a large sack full of very bizarre looking creatures that you suppose to some demented mind could be called chickens. Is this sustenance, Smiler? It's delicious, yes. We're taking them with us. And Artem takes the sack and he puts it over his back and on the way over he uh, he gives a solid kick uh, to the dead head of the one who took Jexter's hand. Alright. You, with your prizes in hand, re- walk over to the uh, scavenger that yeah. and uh, unless anybody has anything else to say <laughs> No, um we are, should probably, uh, well, saw some of you took some uh, rather intense damaging blows. Um, we should probably protect ourselves or at least offer ourselves a bit more protection. And he kind of thumbs a uh, soul coin between his fingers, flipping it through, and then he grabs it and then... <sighs> Very good. As he gains um, 1d10 temporary hit points. I suggest you do the same. It will, uh, you can use the energy of the coin to uh, protect yourself a bit. Does that hurt okay. the soul That's... inside? I don't think so, at least not for very long. Uh, 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 yeah, I don't think I believe him. I can heal myself, thanks. Right, this isn't healing, though. This is extra life. This will protect you above what you can heal. I'm fine. DM, the mass of roiling stuff, mm -hmm. the small pond o stuff. Indeed. Uh, is it? It's Ikor and stuff, It right? appears to be. It is disgusting. If, Ikor, if you could imagine what the Ikor would be like after it's been sitting for weeks and weeks. It is rancid ichor, even more rancid than before. There's a fume that comes off of it, and it is, uh, has a consistency somewhere around tar. Okay. I, I reach down to the ground and pick up my severed hand. Mm -hmm. Look at it a little bit wistfully. Clean under the fingernails. <laughs> well, I don't need this anymore. Whoop! Into the pond. Oh. <laughs> As it does, you see the hand actually begins to move and sort of uh, squirm as the nerve endings are activated by the corrupting influence of this stuff. And it sort of comes up and makes a fist, it makes a claw, and then it sinks into the sludge and is not seen again. My goodness, that's not what I wanted. Smiler, can we please get the hell out of here? Of course. Probably a good idea anyway, you never know. You don't want to leave parts of yourself around, you know? 
oh, idle hands, they say. <laughs> Shall we? You Quite let's. literally, they would play with it. So let's go. <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you get on board the scavenger, and uh, I insert another coin. <laughs> As you who begin are to you take today? Off, as you begin taking off in a new direction, you travel for the rest of the day. Evening comes, and Smiler once again creates his hallucinatory terrain, and you are all able to take a long rest. Eat that. Does anybody have anything they wish to say or do? Um, Artem will spend time teaching Jexter how to use the hand, and he's drawing schematics on one that will fit Jexter better. Very well. Again, the rest passes with nothing to suggest that it's morning or night or noon. You just sit, uncomfortable, but resting, and... When dawn comes, I will need everyone to roll a constitution saving throw. Yes. That's a con, so, uh, con save, not wisdom Indeed. save, anything else weird. Con yes, save. con save. Con save. Ooh, what's the, what's the bar we have to clear? 10. Whew. Oh, just barely. I got a 17 this time. You got a 17. So not only are you not uh, exhausted again from another point, but you regain, you are no longer exhausted from the night before. You were able to find some sort of rest, closing your eyes, and you were able to relax enough so that you were no longer one point exhausted. However, those of you who rolled under a 10, you all are exhausted level one. And once again, you head off into the plains of Avernus, huge plume of black and red dust scattering out behind you. Now you are beginning to see uh, evidence of other machines, some that you could see moving in not the same direction, maybe parallel to you going across the horizon, easily seen because of the large plume of dust. Smiler does his very best to steer clear of these. Occasionally you come across a wrecked uh, one of these, some of them larger, some of them smaller than the one you're currently in, but they look to have uh, suffered extreme amounts of damage. Some of them appear to be even like just melted as if something incredibly hot or caustic just destroyed it and made a almost a puddle of the uh, uh, creature, like some sort of frozen dessert that is melted into the plains of Avernus. But about midway through this day, you see a large circular group of these machines, uh, all of them much, much larger than the one that um, you are riding in. They are gathered in a circle um, and along the back, sort of leading behind it uh, or in front of it, it's difficult to see, tell as it is a ring, um, just a long line of parked infernal machines. And Smiler brings his into a place that appears to be vacant and parks. Congratulations. Where's your friend? Oh, I'm sure he'll be along anytime. Um, he seems to have an uncanny ability to know when there's coin to be spent. As Smiler is talking, you see a very strange lava-like creature uh, squat with uh, uh, no neck and a flat head, sort of pointy ears, and uh, you can see glowing inside him, uh, like his eyes have a, a lava-like look, as if there's the interior of him is molten, and you um, the eyes are... Uh, glowing red from inside and his mouth also as he comes and comes walking over and just one so coin to watch your vehicle sir one soul coin plus the usual repairs yes 
Of course. Hmm. Good. And he places a soul coin in the hand. And... How often do you come here? Enjoy your stay at our wandering emporium, sir. <laughs> and goes over and sort of dis, uh, descends into the ground and then comes up next to Brett. Uh, Debt, excuse me. Oh, whenever I fancy it. Um, whenever I need it. Uh, you all must be hungry. Yes, and need of a bit of relaxation, perhaps? Oh, that would be fabulous, yes. Some place for a manicure, perhaps? Yes, actually, they do that. So I will lead them as I follow me. Do not get distracted or wander off, please. In you walk to this circle of these large machines, and there is, uh, there are tents that have been splayed out. It looks like the interior of this area, uh, the the sides of the infernal machines have been turned into awnings and tents, and there are also tents in the middle, uh, just um, little uh, shops and uh, kiosks and tables, and there's a one, there's several areas with just blankets out on the ground, um, and all number of bizarre creatures and devils uh, milling about, and there are chains going across the open part of this uh, this circle of vehicles with large metal plates hanging from them and they sort of act as baffles creating a little bit of passageways so it's not just an open walk as you come in there is there is uh there you have to walk in certain areas and there's it's easy to get lost if you're not familiar with it but in right at the front there is a sign that says welcome to the wandering emporium as you are reading it the words are actually changing to um, match whatever your the language you first learned to read is it says welcome to the wandering emporium no spell casting no fighting no exceptions um as we're walking i'll try to sort of hang back and at one point um Okay. Uh, speak to, hopefully get to Zelmira to at least to speak with her outside of earshot. All right. If um, that's possible. Artem and I her. I don't know if I have to come up with a ruse to You just to told do that, us to but... stay next to you. <laughs> don't yeah. get away from me. I mean, I try to inside, lose inside the Wandering Emporium, it is possible. There's a lot going we on. Despite if I led them, I, maybe if I led them to Infernal Rapture first, I mean, certainly, and it's kind of you up for it. Yeah. So in you go, um, and your senses are assailed by bizarre sights and sounds. You look over and there is a, uh, a man wearing a long trench coat and a uh, dusty beard, long hair. Um, and you look at him, Artem, and you have to look again. His entire arm is one gigantic metallic and robotic aperture, um, looking very similar to what you have, except on a much more complicated and uh, um, impressive scale. And he this is speaking, he is, this is this man here, and he is speaking to um, a fellow at this tent, and the fellow has uh, along the wall behind him just a wide array of different sized and colored bottles um, and is sort of showing his wares to the man. Just well, perhaps you would care to try one of these, my very newest concoction. And uh, you look to the other side and you see a very um, dour looking man with a uh, mask on his head that is uh, reminiscent of a dragon's crest, just sort of standing there looking into the interior of the uh, of the uh, Emporium appears to be just staring absolute with absolute rage and um, uh, just burning hatred. But you look to see what he's looking at and he's not, can't see what he's looking at. He's just looking with hatred at nothing into the middle distance. Um, directly uh, in front of him is a, a halfling. Um, 
with long black hair, wearing black clothing and a strange uh, sort of hat that resembles a stovepipe. I've never quite seen a hat like this before. It has a wide brim and a stovepipe top, um, but she nevertheless has a very kind face. Um, and she has uh, spread out around on the, um, the blanket in front of her uh, numerous little pots, some of them clearly made of clay, some of them made of metal, some of them look like they've been made of pots, uh, parts of uh, infernal machines. All of them have something growing in them. And she's sitting uh, with her um, uh, legs crossed, with her hands out over all of these um, pots, concentrating. Um, and all this is just what you see at a glance and in you walk and uh, um, let's see Smiler leads you to the middle tent which is a orange circular one and in front of it is a sign that says Infernal Rapture written in very flowery script right time for a meal time for a drink Time to relax. Take a load off. Uh, Jexter, would you be so kind as to grab us all the table and he will hold out a coin? Sure. I take the coin and walk inside. All right. After you the rest in, of you, um, Zelmir, coin feels, have, the coin um, feels very heavy in your hand, Jexter. Just much more heavy than you would expect <sighs> something that size to feel. But you step in, and as as he moves aside the tent and steps in, you all are uh, momentarily uh, disconcerted to see that he appears to disappear from view completely. Just Bolitas Artem, on me. He holds it, drops a coin to each of you if you'll take it. Um, yeah, he does. Okay, and Go he on. will take it in his hand. I walk in and move to the hostess stand I presume. Alright, so in you step and you disappear. Bolitas, do you go in? I do indeed. Alright, you step in, disappear leaving only Zelmira out with Smiler. Zelmira turns to Smiler and expectantly extends her hand. <laughs> he holds out a coin. Do you know what I am? where I came from. No. Ah. Well, have you heard of the Feywild? No. Right. This is making it harder. <laughs> have you called me a liar? Yes. A cheat? Yes. I would call you both of those things, yes. Etc. You'd be right. Okay. For the most part. But yes. hear me out. Okay. You're not getting out. You're not getting your friends out of here without an intense price from the host. I will not be able to buy your way with these coins. What are you saying? Where have they gone? No, 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 not the tent. Sorry. Oh. They'll oh. be fine in there. It's actually quite lovely in there. I'm looking forward to it. There's this, um, she's enormous and has these and arms. You'll, you'll see. It's wonderful. She's um, enormous with arms. Okay. Yes, you described her perfectly. Huge, huge arms. You will see her momentarily. Um, my just, point is just hell this thing all the time. and he is the best chance that is the owner of this place of getting all of you out you see but he will ask a price that well i'm not sure what it will be at the moment but it may seem impossibly steep you know sort of things he's asked for in the past uh, it's it's my experience that some who reside here do not do so willingly 
and the, in their time in service to the proprietor, they incur further debt through one incident or another. It will be the only way to get your friends home. When can I meet? You fought well, but you are not fit for the plains of Avernus. Lovely and frightful as you are. So I say this. Uh, he kind of looks about and leans closer. Whatever it is, believe me when I say you're fascinating to me and I wouldn't let him keep you as one of his jewels. Trust me, don't trust me. Consider it an option nonetheless. But for now, go, relax. I'm sure he'll be along shortly. She gives a broad smile and drops a coin into her hand. Selmira's fingers enclose the coin and she walks Feels into the tent. very heavy. As you all walk into this tent, immediately you feel the heat and the weight and just the absolute exhaustion that you've been feeling in Avernus disappear instantly. As if you have gone hmm, from a sweltering, uh, heated city somewhere in Europe into a air-conditioned department store. And the atmosphere is dark, calm, soft glowing lights, tables in secluded corners. There's a large statue with a fountain directly ahead of you. Um, and more statues sort of supporting the ceiling in various areas, um, each of them holding lights. And as you look at the statue in the middle, um, it kind of morphs, takes on a likeness of whoever happens to be looking at it with the most intensity at the moment, creating a beautiful paragon-like representation of them at their most impressive and beautiful as you step into infernal rapture and at the kiosk a beautiful humanoid woman turns to greet you with a wide smile and she says welcome 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 to infernal rapture my name is portians will you be joining us for dinner i, I guess oh I, I i i'm supposed to give you this Oh, and yes, that is the price. One soul coin. Thank you very much. And she takes it and she puts it on the desk and as she does, it disappears. May I have your name? Um, I, I, my name is Artem. Artem. Is this your first time with us? Yes. Wow. I'm so overjoyed that you've sought fit to spend your evening with us. We have a delicious meal. The chefs have created quite a feast this evening, if I do say so myself. We also have many spa amenities available, if that is something that catches your interest. What, um, what, what happens to the coin? Oh, you don't need to worry about that. Now that you've turned it over, we'll take good care of it. And Artem is still a little bit shell-shocked, and he just allows himself to be led to the table. All right. So as you are, you do, in fact, see an enormous but gorgeous woman standing, looking uh, perfectly proportioned uh, for a, a female humanoid, just incredibly tall, uh, 13 feet tall, sort of standing there. Um, and she bows as you come in. She's wearing a long silver robe. Um, and if you could all be so kind as to put yourselves on the map here. Jalcinda! Isn't that her name? Something like that? Jalcica. <laughs> Jalcica. Jalcica. Close, close. Hello, Smiler. The usual. He looks between the rest of them and actually looks 
<laughs> looks between all of them and then kind of does a double take and looks at Zelmira and is like, maybe later. Very well. I look forward to I have it, little plans man. first. All right, and um, so as you take your seats here, you are led there uh, by uh, Portiens. Um, there are cushions uh, on the floor. Um, more cushions are brought to make you as comfortable as you possibly can be, and you recline around this table with these two softly glowing lights and um, menus are brought to you, and the food is very elegantly described. However, it does cause you to raise your eyebrow. The abyssal chicken does feature as one of the Andres uh, with braised pears in dwarven stout. Also, um, there are fried fey spider legs. Um, there is uh, griffin eggs a la Andre, and there are all sorts of interesting foods prepared in ways that you find somewhat intriguing, but um, have never had before. Uh, Smiler encourages you to eat as many of them as you can. Um, and when the food does come, it does taste delicious. Um, having not had any ability to taste any food for the last couple of days, it is doubly delectable. And as you sit and relax, you feel yourself calming. You feel a bit more <laughs> like yourself and the grief of what you've endured begins to catch up with you. What are we waiting for? Oh, Peter's well, gone. Smiler, <laughs> I think, uh, so I think they... Smiler had to go off and speak yes. to someone privately. But this is uh, quite Smiler figure says... licking good. At... Oh crap! <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, was just haven't about got to the put hang words of this in your yet. mouth. Just, just about <laughs> to put words in your mouth, there, uh, Smiler. They ask you who you're waiting for. Who I'm waiting for? Mm -hmm. As uh, we we had the... yummy food and we feel better now. The proprietor is. Is there someone I can flag down and... Sure. Uh, I suppose a, if I, uh, the moment I start looking for something, someone's probably is, there. <laughs> uh, stepping up um, is an extremely good-looking um, tiefling with uh, light green hair, red eyes, um, and he's wearing a, a, a vest with bare sleeves and a bare chest, um, and a very low-cut uh, pants, sort of um, uh, parachute pants. Um, and he comes walking over and he says, Hello, my name is Remembrance. Is there anything I can help you with? I won't forget that. Ah. <laughs> uh, uh, you're very distracting. Is the proprietor in? I would love to speak to Mahadi. I have I will some inquire. who are in need of his expertise and services. Might I ask your name? Haven't you heard of me? I'm afraid Smiler. not. Smiler. Of course, Smiler. I will remember. I hope you all are enjoying your time with us. If there's anything else you need, we can provide massages, pedicures, manicures, hair stylings, and a number of other pleasurable pursuits for a negligible cost. Shell waxing? And he steps away and goes through a door. And you are alone for a moment. There's kind of an an infernal rapture accent. It's part of the service training, really. <laughs> if you uh, if you if you're here long enough, you know like. A, Hello, I'd like to rub your feet. <laughs> it's really nice, actually. It's, uh... I think it's a Sarasota <laughs> accent, actually. <laughs> I oh, feel that's a different out. waiting room entirely. Oh my god. <laughs> God's waiting room. God's I waiting like... room! <laughs> you, have to, you, you have to do it. I mean, if you're going to get your, you know, 
I feel like I'm gonna get four stars. I feel it's like gotta... there should be some some panthers here. Some lovely panthers. What do you think, DM? The, the panthers are not present, although they've probably been through here. Um <clears throat> <laughs> Does anybody have anything they wish to say or do? Anybody wish to take advantage of any of the amenities being offered here? Uh, Zelmira would like to... So I'm assuming that they've brought out some sort of beverage. Oh yes, right? there are beverages. There's, um, You get the impression that there's very little that they would not be able to provide. And if it's a particularly outrageous request... They might do their very best to accommodate it. But everything has a price. I'm I'm not going to take advantage of any of the services. I'm actually going to sit with Artem quietly the entire time, trying to figure out how to use my hand. I'm All going right. to occupy Artem's time and my time. That's very well. very appreciated. Uh, uh Zalmir, you're muted. Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I it's, started it's to like think eyeballs. about what I wanted to do, and then I was like, I don't know what I want to say. So I just went badoop, 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 and then muted myself. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry we missed that. <laughs> badoop, badoop, badoop. Okay, so actually, because I was just trying to get to the map. Oh my gosh! And then I scrolled so far from where I needed to be. Okay, so there is a pond not a pond a fountain right <laughs> sure yes great so zelmira is going to go make her way to the fountain in the adjoining room um and she's going to sit at the lip of the fountain and she's bringing whatever chalice of beverage was served at dinner over with her and she just sits at the edge of the fountain begins to kind of mindlessly again she pulls out the the misshapen glass figurine not even the nice one that Shane gave her the misshapen one mm -hmm. <laughs> and that is her favorite one and she begins to again roll it between her fingers and at some point her hand finds its way down to the surface of the water and she kind of just drags her fingers lightly along the top of the water, watching the ripples. And it's very clearly deep in thought as tears begin to silently fall as she reflects on those that they've lost. As you're sitting there, um, you hear a voice behind you. What a lovely shade that piece of glass is. She's snapped out of her reverie and oh yes it's it's quite unusual you see before you a dark-skinned man with a very pointed beard and a long waxed and curled mustache wearing purple robes with green splotches on a very reminiscent of a peacock's feathers um and he is sitting on a cushion that is floating and he is looking at you very pleasantly Ah, uh, forgive me. My name is Mahadi, and uh, this is my humble establishment. I do not believe I have ever seen your face before. Might I have the honor of your name? My name is Zelmira. Enchanted. I... Uh, forgive me, but I make it my personal duty to make sure that all of my guests are enjoying themselves and are taking their ease as best they can and I cannot help but notice that you are in distress is there perhaps something I may help you with in spite of herself Zelmira is not someone who typically divulges a lot of information particularly personal information um, but she's exhausted she's weary and she's had something to drink and so she begins to kind of really lose her composure um, and as she brings her hands up to her eyes to dry the tears she just says I I've lost 
many people I loved in a very short amount of time. Oh, dear me. That is most unfortunate. I am pleased that you have found your way to us here at Infernal Rapture. Perhaps we will be able to soothe away some of these empty places in your life. I at least temporarily. That would be possible. I understand. Are those perhaps your friends over there? Yes, uh, those are my companions, my brother and two other friends who are like family. With Smiler. Oh yeah, also Smiler, we're tight. <laughs> Is he also like family? Um, in all honesty, yeah, Smiler is, is relatively new to our to our, um, our group, but he's been helpful enough, I suppose. The most resourceful survivor. I could agree with that. Well, if you will allow me. And he sort of sinks down and holds out an arm. Silmira um, stands up and am I going to walk alongside you? Am I yes, getting... it's, uh, so he puts his arm out and as you stand, <laughs> it, uh, it begins, he floats to the correct level so that the arm is at the correct level for him to escort you. Oh, I didn't know if I got to ride on the floating pillow. <laughs> There's not enough room on the floating pillow for more than one. <laughs> Zelmira pushes Mahadi off and gets on the floating <laughs> pillow. <laughs> uh, you know what? You know what? He puts out his hand, and as he does, the pillow, the <gasps> diameter of it moves and grows in size so that there's now room for you as well. A magic pillow ride. He can that, show that's you the, the world. That's the most magic pillow. <laughs> yes, Zelmira definitely gets up on the pillow. <laughs> He's pleased, and you slowly float over to your companions, and he looks at all of them and says, Good evening, my name is Mahadi, and I am the proprietor of this establishment. I have had the honor of meeting your lovely companion, Zelmira. Might I have your names? Uh, I'm Zelmira's brother. My name is Artem. How do you do? My fascinating contraption you have. Thank you. Most welcome. This uh, is Jexter. Jexter, how do you do? A I know that it is common for tieflings to have only one name, but you are human, yes? Yes. Might I have the honor of your surname? Oh, it's Harpo. Jexter Harpo. Indeed. Of the Harples. Fascinating. Hello, Smiler. This is Politis. Ye Politis, a turtle. Most unusual. You are all welcome. And I am hopeful that we will see each other more often in the future. But my new friend Zelmira here has informed me that there is a great deal of grief in your hearts. Is there anything I might do? to assuage this. Mahari, Smiler brought us to you because he thinks you're the only one that can help us. Oh, well, that is perhaps true, but that would depend on what help it is you seek. We need to go home. I see. Ah, unfortunately, the Hells are a very harsh place for most people who are not born to them and inevitably one always seeks to leave there are legions upon legions of those who share a similar sentiment i am happy to provide what little respite i can but leaving the hells is a difficult prospect. But not impossible. 
Certainly not. How? I would ask you... Hmm. To do this favor for you, I would need a favor in return. A gift of service, of goodwill. It is not particularly taxing for me to enact this favor, but it attracts a great deal of attention, which I must mitigate through other means, deals, bargains, arrangements I have made. Not impossible, but not easy. I would need to recoup the cost, you see. And as much as I like you, I must insist that there is a cost. I must be fair. Otherwise, well, I have been doing this a long time, and if I ever broke my own rules of reciprocity, I would be inundated with requests. And I would no longer be able to maintain my establishment. Therefore, if you wish to leave, I will ask you for service in exchange. What kind of service? What can you do? I... I, I I'm very smart. I can create things. I can... I can wield magic through artifacts. I, I could build something for you. Could you demonstrate, please? Um, and Artem will um, ask uh, Jexter to give him the hand back and he will attach it to the other mechanical element of uh, his arm. And um, he'll do at first some very simple things. He'll show uh, the extension of thieves tools. He'll show cooking tools. He'll, um, uh, and then he'll start, uh, you said no spells, correct? Yes. I'm afraid- No spells. The majority of what I would show you would be breaking that rule. I see. I have another individual in my employ who has tricks such as this. So I'm afraid that what I have seen so far is not particularly impressive. However, he is constantly creating, I believe he calls them schematics. Do you perhaps any have any schematics that you could show me of something that you could create? Yes. And Artem will rummage through the bag and he will produce um, the schematic for the amulet of health that he procured from the house in... Um, mm -hmm. I'm confident I could make this. Very intriguing. Very well. Thank you for your demonstration, Artem. How about you, Sir Tortel? Uh, what could you offer me in exchange for your escape from hell? Uh. I can make your gardens look nice. I see. Unfortunately, there are very few gardens oh. in hell. Oh, that's a shame. What greenery you see here is maintained by a very large group of very skilled individuals. Is there anything else? Uh, but do you like mushrooms? <laughs> of course. I'll just pick one off and hand him. <laughs> there you go. Most kind. I, I'm, a, I'm a druid. Hmm. There is another one like you out in the Emporium. She is struggling to find a connection to her power. I think over time, you would have a similar difficulty. And he turns to you, Jexter. 
Jackster Harpel. That name is not unknown to me. Hopefully it's from the main family and not from my uh, second <laughs> auntie removed, Valen. Yes, indeed. It is from the main family. The oh, good. very eccentric but very powerful magic users. I have been in contact with a few of them. Oh. Including my uncle? What's his Who name? Is? Kipper? What's his name again? Ah, yes. The old badger himself. Your uncle, you say. I understand there was some difficulty recently. I do hope that he is well. I hope he is too. That's why I need to leave here as soon as possible. He's not here, is he? No. He's back at the Ivy Mansion. I meant... Never mind. And then he turns to you, Zelmira. And, my dear Zelmira, what can you offer me? I can offer protection. I, she's really just at a complete loss. She's been in her feelings this whole time, so she doesn't really know what's happening. When I first saw you, you were doing something with the water. Is this a spell? It did not seem to be affecting the safeguards I have in place against magic. I found it most intriguing. How did you do this? Uh, I'm, it's part of my training. I'm, I'm a monk. Ah, and as your training, you can manipulate water? Water, um, heat, ele elemental things. With your hands. Yes. Indeed. Well. And you are related. Yes, he's my twin. Well, I do not wish to break up a family. So here is my offer to you. I will send your turtle friend and as a professional courtesy, your friend Jexter Harpel back to their homes in exchange for 100 days of service from you and your brother here, the Wandering Emporium. For that hundred days, you'll send us home. The hundred days is over. Well, it will require another cost, but we'll surely be able to come to some sort of arrangement between now and then, especially if you manage to create this for me during that 100 days. Artem looks at Chexter and Belitis. I'm not leaving you both here. Jexter has to get home. Oh, Jexter so has to be two. with his family. And you and I both know Jexter shouldn't really be alone. <laughs> Mahadi. Yes. I'm so sorry, but I'm afraid that while Smiler has been such a gracious host, he hasn't he hasn't told you everything. I, I do not doubt it. Smiler rarely tells anyone anything. I've been getting that vibe from him, yes. Do you, by the way, do you know what it is exactly that he defiled? No. Anyway. It's a question um, I have asked myself many times. But you know, um, one of the things that he didn't mention is, as you've heard my family name, um, everyone here, aside from Smiler, they're all my retainers. If I were to be separated from them, if I would not have their services, then that too would incur some cost. You see, I'm used to these sort of negotiations. Mm. Unfortunately, in this negotiation, 
You do not have much to bargain with. I have the story of one who is considered a goddess who came here and fell recently. This is information. Usually information is worth something. There are a great many variables involved in determining how much information is worth. Well, this, this goddess was carried away. She may still be somewhere that someone with your resources could find. Possibly. It sounds like you wish to ask another favor of me. No, if you were to find her, and she was indeed well, and you were able to bring her back here to this wonderful place, then I'm sure she would be grateful to you. I would be gone. As much as I hate to hear the story of anyone, especially one considering themselves to be a goddess, in distress, it is a very common tale in hell. Oh well. You'll return them safely to their homes. It is a very powerful yet simple spell. It should not take very long or much trouble. The difficulty is, as I said, in dealing with those who are not pleased by such spells being cast in their domain. I understand, but you didn't answer my question. You'll return them safely to their homes. Indeed. The spell is perfectly safe, and it will take them wherever they wish to go, although I will only be able to cast it once. So hopefully they can choose a place that they both agree to go. Deli, I'm willing to do this if you will. If you'll stay with me. Of course I would never leave you. And you'll be able to protect us while we work for you for a hundred days, yes? This is the safest place in all of Avernus. Barring the completely unforeseen, there should be no harm that will come to you from any of the creatures that plague these plains. Samira so takes a look around the ornately decorated room and looks into the eyes of her brother and says, from everything that we've seen since we got here, that this does appear to be a truth. And Artem weakly nods his head. How much time do you need to prepare? I can do this one hour from now. As a professional courtesy, and he turns to you, Jexter, and as a personal favor that I hope will one day be returned by your one of the Harples, I can also restore your missing hand. I could only trade a favor from myself. The family's rather picky with such things, but I have confidence everything... that they will remember and appreciate this gesture. Artie? Jax? You it's gave me your hand. <laughs> then you took it back. And Artem reaches into his bag and produces the schematics for the ar the hand that would fit yours exactly. When I come home, I'll make this for you. It's 
not really bad having a hand missing. I can do a lot of things I wouldn't have been able to otherwise, but if you want your hand back, I understand. I do want my hand back, Artem. The one you gave me. You'll owe me. You're good for it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I'm good for it. And Artem will take his hand off and um, uh, he will attach it to uh, Chexter's. I promise when I get back, I'll tweak it so it fits you better. 100 days. 100 days. Jaxter, I, um, I, 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 I wanted to, I, I, um, don't forget me, okay? If only I had some token. I won't. Who knows, maybe I'll write a song about you. <laughs> oh, wonderfully touching. Yes, Mahadi, I apologize, though, I... I won't be needing the hand from you, but regardless, any assistance offered to me will certainly be communicated to my family. With the exception of that one aunt. She's such a bitch. Well, we all have problems with family, don't we? He gestures and a bald-headed woman with luminous eyes and a wrap that goes around her face and then around her body and then around her waist and her legs and just looking like a mummy except without um, the uh, rotting flesh um, and um, instead of wrapped in rags, wrapped in this luxurious blue velvet, um, also with tattoos all over her face comes walking over and um, she steps forward and Mahari says Cartagian, we will need a contract if you would excuse me I must prepare and he floats on his pillow over to the pool and puts a hand out over it and closes his eyes and appears to be concentrating you have an hour Damir you know you've got to take care of Roddy for me. You're muted. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> uh, okay. I, sorry, Sean. Oh no! Cat. I'm and sorry, Kitty. Tell Mira, you know you have to take care of Roddy for me. I've been taking care of him my entire life. That won't change now. But I know that what you have is special. So promise me that you won't forget him. I wouldn't. As long as you promise me that you're not going to fall for that creep. Looks at Smiler. Zelmira just kind of shakes her head. I don't think there's... I don't think there's any... Uh, Besides, I'll have Belitus with me. Oh, sweet Belitus. He's, he's like a walking artillery, just <laughs> trebuchet thing. Just <sighs> spores. Well, I hope you know that even for all the grief I've given you, that I love you like a brother. And you have to take care of yourself. I've got to take care of whatever's happening at my family house. That's true, but yourself also, because, Artie, we're going to see you in a hundred days. One hundred. Undo D. Hun oh my god, I was waiting for someone to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Artem will, um, he, he will open his arm, the facet of his forearm that's left, and he will take the piece of glass that uh, that Shane made for him and he'll hand it to Belitis. Take care of this for me, would you? Uh, of course, I will, boy. And he will just hold it up and it will float in the air. And then another one will appear next to it. 
to represent Zalmira and they will both enter the staff to match the others. And Artem puts his hand on the right side of your shell and says, you saved our lives so many times. This is my way of saying thank you. You're a good Watch boy. Watch for me. <laughs> I try. I don't like this, but you look after your sister. I've been doing that my whole life. <laughs> I'll miss you. Please. Oh. Uh, it's, it's only going to be a hundred days. I miss you both. Crazy kids. Give us five rides. Come on, let's get on with this. Sign oh, a contract sure. for crazy. Uh, yeah. I like being, I, I, as a point of order to this, this is great. I, I, I'm kind of liking being the hero here. Um, great. It's uh, really happy for you all. You're welcome. You remember when I told you, you smiling? See leaning, leaning against the uh, the wall, you see the large form of Jalsica looking over and says, Did I hear you say you were a hero? Surprised? Well, for heroes, we have very special rates. <laughs> um. No, Jalsica. Not today. He's playing hard to get. Elmira shoots Smiler the most withering glare. I do, I do have one more away. thing. Tomorrow, for you, tomorrow he'll love you. All right. Uh, you said one more thing, Belitis? Yeah. He says, I've got one more thing for you, Artie. You know, takes off his cloak and it looks like musty and. Like half rotted and stuff and it'll place it around you and it will just shimmer and like flake off all the the spores and is a sapphire blue click really believe us of course hopefully it'll protect you we'll take really good care of it I know, Until I give boy. it back to you. One hundred day. Hundred days. I am ready, my friends. It might take a little while to walk like over there. And you look and you see the pool is shimmering in a similar way to the circle that you stepped into on um, the floating citadel. Although, whereas that appeared to be water in stone, this is water over water. A uh, very strange sensation as the water underneath ripples in one direction and the water or the rippling effect on top ripples the other way. Sort of a sort of a shimmer that comes up from it like the heat from the desert. We will all need to hold hands. He holds out a hand to you. Belitis. I will reach out and reach out to Jexter's hand that is there. I'll grab that and I'll reach out to Artem to hold the hand that he crafted to replace the one that was sliced off. And he then um, Mahadi looks back towards you. Um, Zelmira and you, Artem, is the contract satisfactory? Just to be clear, a hundred days in the, our understanding of time. Yeah, uh, as you look over it, uh, make an investigation check. Okay. Uh, 17. 17. Best you can do, there's nothing hidden. Um, it is very straightforward, a hundred days of of employ, um, during which time he will see that you are cared for um, and you have a place to stay um, and you will do the jobs that he sets forth for you. 
uh, I sign it. All right. I look at Mahadi and ask for his guarantee that they will be sent back safely to where they are wanting to go, that they will be safe. To the best of my ability. Okay, well, seeing that she's not the most thrilled with that answer, but (laughs) seeing that... I am very powerful, my dear. She sees Smiler nodding enthusiastically and for some reason believes him. And so she <laughs> she doesn't know anymore. So she takes the pen and she oh, Fine. Fine. <laughs> just a just a quick moment as we as yeah. we race to the climax of this. Just want to give a quick shout out to Fabled Forty Two. Thank you yes, so very much. I just saw Hello, everybody. Everybody. Do continue. Hey. Welcome to so, Solar Ladies, guys. Um, we are doing a As giveaway you... if you would like to enter for exclamation mark a giveaway for some Kraken dice we are sponsored by them so welcome uh cheers chris and welcome to everyone thank you um so as zamiri as you sign mahadi nods he says gentlemen shall we leave where do you wish to go oh, to, to chester's place The Ivy Mansion. The Ivy Mansion. Indeed. And we're off. And he steps. And as he does, he floats out into the air above the pool. Jexter, you and Boletus holding hands around him as you do one rotation slowly, long enough for you to get one last look at Zelmira and Artie. In this idyllic setting which as the scene begins to fade for you suddenly looks far more sinister than it appeared as you disappear immediately upon them vanishing stepping up to you is a woman with a long pointed collar very severely pulled back hair pale features, but beautiful, if cruel looking face, wearing a long robe and carrying a staff. She looks down at you and she says, my name is Agamemnia. You, she points at you, Artie, will come with me. And I'm going to need a wisdom saving throw as she casts suggestion upon you. Got a three, uh, and with my wisdom bonus, that's a five. It's a perfectly reasonable request, Artie. I go with her. You stand up and go. Zelmira, uh, what do you do? In a moment of panic, Zelmira reaches out to her brother and tries to grab hold of him. Mm. Wait! <laughs> Where's he going? Where I, are they taking him? It's fine. I just work. She's she keeps his she keeps the magical stuff. She's got a really nice shop. It's got a dragon head that speaks nonsense. How will I know he's okay? This is part of the deal. How will I know he's okay? Be okay. He doesn't. Sally. It's okay. Both of you. It's he doesn't break his word like that. That's not how it works. The the reason all this stick. <laughs> the reason all of this stays together. <laughs> Is because you, you knock something, you knock something <laughs> over, and immediately there's a the servant is oh so sorry sir and picks it up and carries it away. They apologize. Yes, be more careful, please. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Am I in a trance, Sean, as I follow her, or can I no, actually respond? You, to- you are you are charmed. Uh, you okay. can respond, but you feel there's nothing untoward about this. Is a perfectly reasonable suggestion. Um, She's not asking you to do anything uh, violent. She's not asking you to do anything. She's just saying you should come with her. Sally, this is part of the deal. <laughs> when will okay. I be? When will I be able to see him? Such questions you will find are not easily answered. You Artie, have I your love own you. tasks. I love hmm. you too, Sally. We'll find each other. Yeah, of course. Walking towards you is a lovely young woman 
um, uh, who's carrying a, a satchel in one hand and a, a bucket in the other uh, that is filled, uh, that is full of um, vials of brightly colored glass. And she comes over and she looks at you and says, My name is Belizandra, and I think that you're going to be coming with me. There's a lot to talk about and a lot to learn. And your brother will be safe, I promise. Okay. Come on. We're going to be friends. And she puts her arm in yours and begins walking you away as Artie turns and walks away. Doesn't even look back. And Zelmira, of course, is just... Her eyes are stuck to him as he moves in the opposite direction. Agamemnia takes you out of Infernal Rapture, leaving Zelmira to whatever fate awaits her. And we will find out the answer to that when we return next week for the final installment of Descendants of Avernus. As we say goodbye to Jexter, Harpel, and Boletus. Now there are only two. Final two of the adventurers who set out from the Ivy Mansion and the Fuzzy Quarterstaff. Not too many days ago, but it feels like several lifetimes. Thank you all for watching.